off this big game tonight. And as you can see, Prairie View A&M, number one in the West and in the East. Florida A&M with that perfect 4-0 record. Yeah, the Rattlers, they are 4-0. They are on top, and they they have that confidence and that swagger, and they expect to come in tonight and maintain that. As far as TSU goes, it's all about the new identity. They've won two in a row, and they're ready to get on a roll against this tough challenge. Yeah, they have some injuries to overcome, and they're doing that. They're heading in the right direction. Let's talk now about some players you may want to keep an eye on for tonight, and we start with the visitors for the Rattlers. Their quarterback, Jeremy Musa, his coach says he has a grade-A, number-one type arm, and he's kind of on, counting on that big arm tonight. Yeah, he can make all the throws, and he's such a great leader for this team, and he leads the SWAC in passing. Yes, he does. 1,569 passing yards, 12 touchdowns with just five interceptions, so he is the engine that makes things tick. And on the other side, well, the TSU Tigers have themselves quite the running game going now, and it's led by Ladarius Owens, number 22. Last week, he ran for 163 yards. Uh, he, he has been special uh, all season long, really, from the beginning. He is the number two rusher in the swag, 66 carries, 428 yards. He averages 7.2 a carry, and he wants to keep that going tonight. You are looking at head coach Willie Simmons right there from Florida A&M, the Rattlers head coach. Of course, he's in his sixth year at Florida A&M. He's had a lot of success there. He actually played his college ball at Clemson, then played his final year at the Citadel. But you know what? He's familiar with the Houston area because he was once the head coach at Prairie View A&M. And on the other side, another head coach who's very familiar with Houston, and that would be Clarence McKinney. And that is not Coach McKinney right there, but he's on the sideline. And he's excited about this game. He's ready for his fifth year at Texas Southern. Grew up right across the street from TSU. And we are underway at Shell Energy Stadium. The kick goes through the end zone. So the Tigers from TSU will go in on offense first, and they will start first and 10 from the 25. Let's check out our impact players brought to you by GM. We have Kamari Young and Isaiah Major from Florida A&M, two guys who will play a pivotal role tonight. Oh, no question about it. And again, big tight end, Kamari Young. Uh, he can get things done. One touchdown, 206 yards. Uh, and Isaiah Major, this guy is just an amazing tackler. Uh, 54 tackles uh, on the season. And then for TSU, Jace Wilson and Jacob Williams. What a job he's done on defense at that linebacker My, position. He, he is an animal. He is everywhere, super aggressive, 50 tackles on the season. And Jace Wilson is coming into his own. He is getting this team to have his identity and his plays that fit his style. That was your impact players brought to you by GM. So the Tigers from Texas Southern will have the football first behind Jace Wilson, the quarterback who will throw it on first down. Inside completes his pass. Jaron Johnson, and he has a first down for the Tigers. Nice catch and run there. Wow, Chase what a Wilson absolute pinpoint accuracy Johnson. throw. He had a little bit of window. Watch how the team he was covered. He threw it open. This time he hands to Owens, and Owens has a hole. Make it an eight-yard carry for Ladarius, Ladarius Owens. And boy, Owens, the TSU the Tigers here. are starting with that up-tempo, and it's working so far. Well, you can only be up-tempo when you're successful, right? And they have two successful plays come out. I think the attack is what they're about. They're attacking the Rattlers. Jace Wilson, of course, Second number 14, down. started the year out as the backup quarterback to Andrew Body. We'll have more on that in just a minute as they put Johnson in motion to the left. Turns, fakes it inside, and the pass is blocked. A big defensive play by the, the Rattlers. Number 58, Anthony Dunn, got his big hands on that one and slapped it away. Yeah, get pressure on him, keep your hands up. That's the way to make sure <laughs> that you can stop him at the point of attack. So make it third down now, third and about two for the first down for the TSU Tigers. Owens in the backfield. He sets up to Wilson's. Now he goes in motion. Wilson looks the other way. Comes back on the slant and he throws high. Was trying to hit Ian Means, who was actually That's open on the play, but he could not handle that one. Pass over his head. So the Tigers will have to punt it away after picking up the initial first down on the drive. Let's move now to some keys to the game presented by GM. These keys are for Texas Southern. Yeah, and, and they got to be create create turnovers from the defensive standpoint. Make sure they're tackling well, and offensively, they got to be opportunistic and not miss plays like they just missed. You had a good slant pattern. You got to connect. You can't leave plays on the table. Every play matters. That was a good opportunity for the Tigers, but now they will punt the football away. Patrick Collins 
gets it off. Nice kick. Jamarie Sharid is hit on the play as he was trying to make the fair catch. He was bumped. The officials are marking it down right there. It looks like it's no harm, no foul, but there was some contact. Yeah, the defender literally was blocked off his feet and flew into him, so that's a good no call. A lot of times we see a lot of laundry early for no reason. I think that one was uh, self-evident right there. And again, Sharid is a dangerous, dangerous guy, so good job getting downfield. Yeah, the Tigers. he's a dangerous guy, and he's also from Houston, so he's expecting to have a big night tonight. Let's take a look now at Jeremy Musa. He's 6'3", 225 pounds. He's pounds. He's a graduate student from Chino Hills, California. You know what? He had a cup of coffee at Vanderbilt. Now he's with the Rattlers from Florida A&M. And, of course, he was the preseason offensive player of the year in the SWAC. And he's uh, so far with over 1,500 yards passing. He's living up to all the billing. Of course, more than 1,500 yards passing so far this season. So Musa will call out the signals for the Rattlers. He turns and he gives it to Jennings. Jennings bounces off a of one tackler, and then he's knocked down after that. I'll tell you, Butch, that's just one play, but the aggression that the Tigers was impressive right there. Alinus Noel helping out on the tackle there. If he's going to pick up a short gain on the play, call it a gain of about, well, maybe no gain on the play. So call it second and 10 for Florida A&M. They've been averaging 27 points a game. So they've been doing a good job of putting the points up on the scoreboard, have the Rattlers this year. Their passing total, they're right around 270 yards again. As Musa turns and he gives to Jennings again. And Jennings has a hole this time. And he's going to be close to another first down. He says he has it, but it looks like he's going to be marked a little short. Looks like number 23, James Williams tackle right there. And again, he... That that went for a little ride on the tackle as well. It didn't stop him cold, so. But enough to stop him for the first time. So the Rattlers will now have a third and short. They come in, they have a big offensive line, so that's going to be a big test for that TSU defensive line tonight. I mentioned both teams are streaking. The Rattlers have won four straight. The Tigers from TSU, after knocking off Bethune Cookman on the road, they've won two straight. And now we have a whistle and a timeout call. And a timeout by Florida A&M. So Coach Simmons would like to talk about a key third down early in the ball game. Well, I just tell that tells you how much he wants a great start, Butch. <laughs> As Musa walks off, we'll take a timeout here in the booth. No score. We're in the first quarter. I'm Andrea, founder of a boutique handbag brand, Andy, and this is why I switched to Shopify. It's the challenges that we don't expect, like a site going down or the checkout wouldn't work. What's nice about Shopify is when I'm with my family, when I'm taking time off, knowing that I have a site up and running and our business is moving forward because we have a platform that we can rely on, that is gold to us. Start your free trial with Shopify today. <laughs> yes! Oh, I'm so excited. You got enough stuff in here to go camping for a week, right? We are not going camping for a week, are we? No, we're not going camping for a week. Okay. But I do know a shortcut. I don't know if we can make this. Don't you need an SUV for this? Watch this. I got you, and Kona got me. Okay, Hyundai. I told you. Do we really have to go hiking? Girl, hiking is good for you. The Subway Series menu is getting a new lineup of sandwiches. The Deli Heroes. There's fresh sliced turkey on the Titan Turkey. Fresh sliced ham on the Grand Slam ham. Five meats on the beef. And look at that double cheese. Try Subway's taste is refresh yet. This month, join the new Subway MVP Rewards program and get rewarded. Get 50% off any footlong when you join Subway MVP Rewards. So many all-star options. It's just for Subway MVPs, right? You catch on quick, Herbert. Join now and get 50% off any footlong. In my book, saving while shopping is a no-brainer. So I use Rakuten to get cash back while I'm book clubbing. Cha-ching! With Rakuten, I get cash back at over 3,500 stores. So how does that work? Well, stores pay Rakuten to send them shoppers. Then, Rakuten shares that money with us in a check or PayPal payment. It's free and easy. Shh! I think you're missing the plot. And I think you're missing the cash back. Cha-ching! Some people just know there's a podcast about that. Are you listening?
Swag Football on ESPN is presented by Pepsi, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and by GM, proud sponsor of the Swag. Clarence McKinney and his Tigers from Texas Southern trying to come up with some big defense here. Third and a yard and a half. Let's call it one for a first down for the Rattlers from Florida A&M. Jeremy Musa at quarterback. Puts Jennings to his right. Turns. Fakes it to Jennings. He's going to pass it to Shereed. And he makes the catch. Jamari A. Shereed, the Houston native with a big catch right there for the first down for the Rattlers. Let's take a look now at the keys to the game presented by GM for the Rattlers. Offensive decision making just like that. Make the right call and then make the play. Play to your potential and then control. play with control, confidence. They have to make sure they play attention to detail. Sometimes they can get overconfident and get sloppy. Florida A&M will use a lot of different formations tonight. They'll have a lot of motion. They throw a lot of looks at you, but Musa will pass it here. Floats it downfield and it's an incomplete pass. So Jeremy Musa tried to hit a big one there. He had Shereed streaking down the sideline, but we do have a flag on the field. So that was our referee for tonight, Tony Ross, and he has Ja'Cory Benjamin guilty of pass interference on the play. Yeah, I'm not sure I saw that on that, but... uh... Again, uh, I was concerned. They actually had a mountain of men moving left like it was going to be a sweep left, and then they throw back right. A very interesting play call there. And one thing in talking to Simmons this week, Coach Willie Simmons, was that, see right here, they got all their linemen pulling left, so you have defense going. You really can't see the defender or any kind of defensive holding, et cetera, there. But uh, but Coach Willie Simmons talked about the fact that they call out of run plays, but there's an option for the quarterback. Musa can make the decision of what he's going to do in the play. So Musa has Jamari A. Shereed joining he and Jennings in the backfield. Gives it to Shereed. He's trying to get around the outside, still on his feet as he bangs forward for about two yards. So the little man goes in there and picks up a tough two yards. Yeah, and you like the way he realizes, I'm not going to get outside. He just cuts and just turns it up, lowers his head, and gets what he can. Good job by Shereed. He got almost four yards on that now, looking at where it was marked down. He goes into the pile, and he disappeared, but it's a nice game for about four yards on first down. I saw him warming up earlier, man. He is just a physical specimen, small guy, but really built well. Second and six for Musa and the Rattlers. Rolling to his left, floats it downfield, has a receiver out there, and it goes off his hands. He was trying to hit Marcus Riley, but he couldn't quite hang on to it. But Xavier Player... Made a nice defensive play right there for TSU. Yeah, player, look at him. He was right there. And again, he almost, if he had turned earlier, he may have had a shot at getting an interception right there. You know, Florida A&M comes into this game tonight. They lead the overall series. And you might be surprised to know that it's only 9-2. to two. Nine wins for A&M compared to two for Texas Southern. First meeting back in 1958. Third down now. Six yards to go for the Rattlers and Jeremy Musa as they try to keep this drive alive. Ball resting on the 49-yard line. Musa will pass it again. Fires inside, has his man. That's a first down for the Rattlers. So that'll move the chains as he completes the pass to Marcus Riley, who makes a big catch. The 5'11", 175-pound graduate student from Tallahassee coming up with a big catch. Yeah, Riley did a great job, a nice hook shot. And again, you know, a a hook, hook pattern. What I like about what he did there, he, you know, when you really turn and show your numbers to your quarterback, you're showing you're open, and they also an easy read for the quarterback. Riley transferred in from Bethune-Cookman. Been a big part of this offense since he got here. So that's another first down for the Rattlers. As Jorge said, Musa is number one in the conference in passing, and he's going to throw it again. Musa cuts it loose, has a man open, and he dropped the football. Wide open was David Manigo, and the ball was right on the money. He did everything but catch it. Yeah, Manigo will be uh, having some nightmares on this one. He gets in the right spot, gets himself open, and then just drops it, hit him in the gut. Had to be a mix-up in the secondary there, because when he cut inside, 
He broke wide open there, and the ball was right there on time, but he couldn't quite hang on. They'll so, come back to that one. You watch. Second down now for the Rattlers. Musa comes back with that wide receiver screen, has his man. That's going to be a pickup of about six, and it's Riley again on the catch and run. Now watch this play develop. And again, we talked about making the correct decisions. Look how the your linemen are in motion. They clear things out. He almost runs over one of his big cards going through, but it was just great play discipline. Everyone's going out, grabbing their man, creating a great play there. So number nine, Kelvin Dean Jr. now in the backfield. For Florida A&M behind Musa. Another third down coming up for the Rattlers. Called this one third and about four yards to go for the first down. Musa with a quick pass. Completes it. Spin move and they're going to come up short. A good defensive play over there by the TSU Tigers. Yes, yeah, Reed had nowhere to go on that one. That was Canary Simmons who came up from his defensive back spot, made a big tackle, but Moose is not going anywhere. The Rattlers are going to go for it on fourth down. Call it fourth and five. Make it fourth and four, and the offense is still on the field. But what a play by Canary Simmons. Didn't fool him at all on yeah. that little wide receiver. And, yeah. again, and I'll say this. You know, when you're a coach and you see your players make their reads perfect and be there for the play and make it, that's just sweetness to your, to your heart there, and that's exactly what he did. First... Fourth down gamble of the day. Musa passes inside. It's going to bounce off a bunch of people. Finally hit the ground as an incomplete pass. A dangerous throw. And it's going to end up as an incomplete pass. And the Tigers come up with the first big defensive stop in this game. So the Rattlers, who were averaging 27 points a game, are stopped by the TSU defense. Still no score in the first quarter. We'll be right back. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Huge play coming up. Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. Tostitos Hardy Dippers. In 1920, an athletic league was formed and slowly became one of the leading sports associations in the world of collegiate athletics, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Today, the SWAC is looking towards the next century growing, supporting, and transforming our intercollegiate sports activities for student athletes and promoting academic excellence. Each SWAC member institution represents a high level of integrity and sportsmanship. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Welcome back, everyone. Butch Alcindor along with Jorge Vargas with you here. And we're going to talk about the number one defense in the SWAC. That would be the, the dark cloud defense from Florida A&M, a term that was coined by the school's president, Larry Robertson. And they're the number one defense in the SWAC. They're living up to that dark cloud defense. And those guys, Isaiah Major, Johnny Chaney, and Jordan Moore are making it happen. Yeah, they're the one to get it, and it comes from the first line of the Rattlers' charge. And they read it, and he said, this is like our defense. <laughs> and they represent well. Yeah, Isaiah Major having an incredible year so far. And the Tigers from TSU go to the run. That is Owens with a lot of room and then a big hit. 
a smackdown, and that's going to draw a flag. Wow, what a big hit there by Eric Smith after a first down run by Ladarius Owens. And we'll see if it was whether it was about the hit or something else. It could have been a hole. We'll see what Tony Ross and company come up with. And I think that was about the hit, but I mean his head was up. Personal foul. That is target defense number eight. The previous play is on the further review. Let's take another look, Jorge. Yeah. I think that was just a good hard hit. Let's see, take a look at it here. Because there is coming. In. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a violent hit. But I mean, we're playing football, so <laughs> I, I have a hard time with this one. Uh, I sure would throw a flag on it. But uh, again, again, the intent there well, is to hit hard. He does hit towards the top, but he's actually hitting with the shoulder there a little anytime bit. Anytime you, you go, anytime you go high, though, you, the chances are that flag is going to come flying out. And he came in there high, and it was a big stick. Like you said, he's playing football. It's a big stick when you're hitting around the head, and he he ducked the head. That right. may have been the key thing of the whole thing. He ducked yeah. the head. Yeah, no, I, I get it, but I think he was trying to hit more shoulder. But, again, I guess under the letter of the law where we're at now, uh, I just think the intent was a hard hit, and uh, he certainly got that done. We'll see what they uh, – I would imagine it – it would be a shame if they call targeting and, and he's out for the game. This game just started. I think that's uh, to see Smith go out this early in the game would be really, really tough uh, for the Rattlers. And, and again, I, while I can live with the flag, kicking the guy out for that hit, I think would be a, a little bit overboard. But we'll see. Well, I was watching Owens after the big hit to see if he was showing any ill effects of it, and he got up, bounced up pretty quick. Yeah, no, I, I think that's just a serious football hit. And here comes Tony Ross with the the announcement. Shows how tough the Darius is. After further review, the field on the call has been reversed. There's no targeting on this play. So I think that's a good, good call. reversal there. How about that? Yeah, no, I think that's a, that's a good that's a good call there. Again, I mean, uh, you know, the thing I think that's always tough about slow mo. Slow mo's great because you can watch something. But it doesn't account for you running full speed. Get the defense. This will be a 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So the end result of the play will be a first down for the TSU Tigers, and Owens is still in the backfield. You know, we mentioned before that he had a huge game last week. 163 yards and three touchdowns on the ground against Bethune-Cookman. Tigers going to work again. Go back to Owens again. Owens has a hole. He spins through, still on his feet. Owens is going to have another first down. How about that, Ladarius Owens? That is special right there. You see the spin, legs keep churning. So Chase Wilson going to throw this time. Pat fires underneath. Has Blanton with the catch and run. That is King Blanton with the catch. And now we have a late flag thrown down after the play. Yeah, I think that's going to be on uh, Kendall, number three, Kendall Bowen. Right after the game, he gave a little extra encouragement. I think that was not wanted by the Tigers. <laughs> TSU, this all started after the big fourth down stop by the Tigers. And, and I'll tell Out you. the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. It's the defense, number three. Clemson will be half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Let's take another look. Again, you watch him trying to get every yard, fighting, scratching. And yeah, right at the end there, he slaps him right in the face, right in front of the ref, so that was an easy flag. <laughs> that flag was, the laundry was in the air as soon as that hand was off the face mask. Yeah, Kendall Boulder right there, Jaron Johnson with a hit, and that's going to be a penalty every time. And now the Tigers have themselves knocking at the door inside the 10. They have a first and goal situation for Wilson and company. Wilson gets straight ahead to Owens, and this time, the Rattlers hold. You know, at, at the uh, beginning of the game, we talked about execution for the Rattlers and staying there. So I think the execution for the Tigers has been phenomenal. I mean, great play calling, but they've been executing really well. Their plan coming into this game has been fantastic. 
TSU now with a second down and goal to go. They turn, fakes it to Owens, pass it to a wide open Johnson, and he takes it in for the score. And it's Texas Southern on the scoreboard first here at Shell Energy Stadium. What a great, great job. I'll tell you what, that that play action, I was all in Ladarius. I thought Ladarius had the ball. I really did. But he pulls it out, throws the perfect pass, easy to catch, right? He doesn't drill it at him, makes it easy to catch for the touchdown. Jaron Johnson was the receiver on the play for the touchdown, and what a story he is. Missed almost two years of football because of an injury, hung with it, did his rehab, kept trying to get back on the field, get back on the field, and here he is this year having a great season for the Tigers. So yeah. the extra point of tip is good. It wasn't pretty. You won't get style points, but it was good. And the TSU Tigers find themselves in the driver's seat early on. Wilson with the toss to Johnson. Tigers. Ford. You see the name driving down almost every road in America. But you'll also find it in other places. On the grip of hammers raising homes. In toy boxes. And classrooms. Because over 2,900 Ford dealerships nationwide means more people serving more communities like yours for more than 120 years. Ford, we are all in on America. Once you start something new at work, you just got to keep it moving forward, right? Well, it's not that simple because your work involves a lot of people and scattered tools. But there is a better way. Monday.com, the platform that unifies all parts of your work so you can streamline the way you plan, manage, and track work. Because when everything is aligned, work really takes off. Learn more at Monday.com. Did you know you can get someone to shop for you? Stitch Fix really gets me and what I need. Even better, they save me a trip to the mall. It's easy. I share my style, size, and budget, and they do the shopping for me. Stitch Fix sends me things that fit and make me feel like a more stylish version of myself. I keep what works and send back the rest. No subscription required. No commitment. Just my style. Stitch Fix. For over six decades, Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Toyland has made wishes come true for everyone. Now through Wednesday, we're celebrating with great gifts at great prices throughout the store. Like this rechargeable LED work light, just $17.99. This Nerf 2.0 double punch blaster, only $29.99. And assorted Dots home style snacks, just $4.99 each. Plus, make your Blaine's Christmas wish list on the Farm and Fleet app for a chance to win up to $1,000. Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Toyland, where wishes come true for everyone. The Texas Southern Tigers turned a great defensive stop on fourth and about five. They stopped the Rattlers' Cole, and then with the aid of a couple of personal foul penalties, they took it all the way down, and you have the Wilson to Johnson pass for the touchdown, and that is where we are right now, 7 nothing Texas Southern in this ballgame. And again, the key to those drives, you're right, they got help with a couple of 15-yard uh, uh, penalties, but their execution and their play calling was fantastic with Darius Owens. Uh, gave them great run support, which opened up some of the passing game. And again, execution was really, really fantastic. So Gustavo Romero will kick it off for the Tigers. It's going to be a short kick. Fielded at about the 17. And the Rattlers, that is Jennings, and he's going to be popped down right there at around the 32-yard line. So they will have good field position to start this possession for Florida A&M. And the Rattlers, I mentioned before, they're a big offensive team. They're averaging 27 points a game, averaging 270 passing yards a game, and they've rushed for more than 100 yards a game. But so far, with seven minutes to go here in the first quarter, that TSU defense has been up to the test. Yeah, Coach Will, you said, and said it, it's all about how they approach it themselves, and they got to make sure they're looking internally. And right now, he's probably trying to say, hey, it's a wake-up call, gentlemen, let's go. So Musa brings the offense back out on the field, and now we have a flag. Could be too much time. Italy Martin on the play. Delay game. 
believe it's Kamari Offense. Young moving. Number eight. And that's Tony Ross Five right there. Two. Delay of game. Down. So, Musa, they just, you could tell that they were taking way too much time to get that thing snapped. And, and you know, Coach Simmons says his team goes through these stretches. Where he's the, they, yeah. <laughs> we'll call them stretches. That's yeah. What, yeah, the way he said, they have these, these moments where they're not playing up to their potential. And he tries to keep them out of those stretches. So this time they go back to the running game. It's Yant on the carry. He's going to get it back a little bit past the original line of scrimmage. Well, what's interesting. Call it six-yard game yeah, there. I'll just say that about Coach Simmons is that it's not cockiness for, for the Rattlers, but they do believe that they have a superior team, and then they start to lose their focus. And he said when they get all on the same page, they are exceptional. And he said, really, we've not played that kind of game where we played to our abilities yet. So Musa this time with two receivers to his left has a single receiver to the right at the top of your screen. Turns and he's going to keep this time. Musa's going to be close to the sticks and it depends on the mark. He's very close to the first down and it is our first down for Florida A&M. Well, did you see Musa cut make that decision? And he was like, there's no sliding. There wasn't even a thought of sliding in that play. Watch him right here. He's like, I'm gone. And again, he just pushes, barrels his head down and pushes forward for the first down. And of course, Musa works very close, closely with head coach Willie Simmons when it comes to the offense. And he says he will run. This guy's a good athlete. He just doesn't run a lot because he usually doesn't have to. So first and 10 for Florida A&M. They go to Yant. And he's going to pick up a couple there before he's knocked down by the Tigers defense. A couple of maroon jerseys there on the stop. Jacob Williams was part of that party at the running back. <laughs> Jacob Williams just had an outstanding year so far for the TSU Tigers. I mean, he had 13 tackles in that big win last week against Bethune-Cookman. But more than that, he had a strip and run for a 95-yard touchdown. I mean, this guy was creating big plays for the Tigers' defense. They had to bring in some extra oxygen for that one. <laughs> Second down now for the Rattlers. They have Kelvin Dean Jr. in the backfield. The pass goes to Dean. Dean is hit, still on his feet, tried to spin out of it, worked his way all the way to midfield before Linus Noel finished him off at the end of the play. Yeah, that was you call a team tackle. Enough guys got in the way, slowed him down. Noel came there to clean it up. The Linus Noel, 6'2". It says 230 pounds, but I'm pretty sure my roster is wrong. Just taking a look at him there. He's a transfer from Nichols. He's, He's got probably... six two three forty. Yeah, I'm that's that here. sounds right. <laughs> does that help your picture a little yeah, bit better? Yeah, it does. He's getting close to that 250 <laughs> range there. I got to make that little notation there. Big third down coming up now. Shereed in motion. Musa gives straight ahead. A lot of room right there for Dean. Dean has the first down and a uh, five extra. So a nice run there by Kelvin Dean Jr. And a great job by the line, but I think Musa, what Musa did really well, he sold that. He sold that to the, like he was going to pass it his whole time. He was looking at, at the receiver as he hands it off, and I think that defense had to pause for a minute, which created the room. So Dean rushing for four yards and a first down. So far the drive, five plays, 21 yards on this drive by the Rattlers from Florida A&M. No, Kanari Simmons having him a game already. He's everywhere around the ball. Wherever it is, he's there. So Musa is going to throw this one behind to Shereed. He spins, and he could not get away. A big play out there by the TSU defense again. Again, that ball was thrown backwards. So if he'd have fumbled it, uh, that would have been a live ball. He throws it behind him, and we'll see if Shereed's got an arm later. They're maybe setting something up to throw down the field later in the game. Yeah, an outstanding play from Ja'Cory Benjamin coming up quickly to make that stop. Second down now coming up for the Rattlers. Make it a loss of two by Sharid on that last play. Musa has three wide outs to his left. He's looking that way. Fires to the deep man and he's open. It's a catch and he steps out of bounds. That is Jamari Gassett on the catch, number two. Yeah, the Tigers softened up their zone quite a bit. Musa saw what he liked and just put it out there 
wide open, you can tell. Gas probably wishes he could have stayed in a little bit, fight for some more yards. Yeah, he great would, play. He's just short of the first down. Now it's third and about three, call it a four yard it's needed for the first down. So third and four to complete the first down. Musa fakes it, dumps it off to the big tight end, Kamari Young. And boy, he was just tripped up. He was about to shift gears there and hit another gear because he's something. He's an excellent athlete, good catch, good first down for the Rattlers. Yeah, what a well-executed play and, and design of the play. So Musa goes back to the run this time. It's Jennings. Slips away, still on his feet. Knocked down at the nine-yard line. Terrell Jennings showing some really... Quick moves inside there. He's, he just kept churning away. And the Tigers barely got onside before that play was even called, and I think that's what the Rattlers are doing now, right now. On the next play. Shereed has just tripped up a good defensive play over there by Xavier Player, and that might have been a touchdown if not for that excellent play by Player. And again, when you have successful plays, you're, you're, you're able to just literally run play after play. You don't have to pause for the defense in exchange. And right here, the Rattlers wind up subbing some guys in. So, therefore, now TSU's got a moment to take a breath. But those three plays, back to back to back, didn't give them time to breathe. That is Leland Wilhoit in the backfield. He was the guy who ripped off that 15-yard run that took the football down to the nine. So, second down now for the Rattlers. Fakes it to Wilhite. Keeps it. He's going to pass it, and he goes too high. He was throwing it out for Burke, Kareem Burke, the freshman receiver, and he threw it over his head. I'll tell you what, the, the Rattlers offense is a maze to deal with if you're a defender because every play they have has options. And that's what Coach talked about was that the quarterback just has to make the right reads of what he's doing. I mean, that was a running back. The quarterback could run, a running back could run, or you could throw. And they went through all three. And as a defender, you have to respect them all. They keep the pressure on the defense. Musa and company now. Third and goal to go from the seven-yard line. This is the 12th play of the drive. Fires in the end zone, and it's intercepted by the Tigers. That is Xavier Player, who read that one perfectly, came across and made the INT for the TSU defense. The second huge defensive play for the Tigers here in the first quarter. Yeah, and, and Coach Clarence McKinney talked a lot about, hey, I need my defense to step up this week and continue creating turnovers. And right here, great read, jumps in front of the receiver. And I love he just catches it, goes right out of bounds. They'll pick it up to 25. Great, great play by the Tigers. Yeah, he was trying to hit David Manigo in the back of the end zone, and I think Player smoked that one out from, from the get. Yeah. May have kind of set Musa up a little bit on that one. Well, I was going to say, you pretend like you're not paying attention. You, you kind of kind of get them to think it's open, and then you just break on the ball. But I love he attacked the ball, kept his hands out front, so it couldn't even be defended by the, by the receiver. So that TSU defense with a stop on fourth down and now an interception in the end zone to stop another drive. So they come out, go to the running game. Owens with a great spin move, still on his feet, and he's finally swung down. But how about Ladarius Owens picking up right where he left off? That is Lovey Jenkins, who came up with the tackle for the Rattlers. I'll tell you, that offensive line, Aiden Hemphill, Torrance, creating some space. Wilson now, with some time, has a man all by himself on the sideline. Still on his feet is Trenton Leary. And that's a young man who had a huge game last week. You know, we didn't talk much about it, but TSU has a, a couple of injuries on the offensive side. A couple of their starting wide receivers not playing tonight. And Leary has been picking up the slack. They go to the run this time, and the Rattlers respond quickly. Isaiah Major, one of the tacklers inside to make it a short game for TSU. You know, I, I, I think it's like uh, when you watch this Tigers offense, the way they're attacking, they're just punch, 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 punch. They're not letting the Rattlers really kind of recover. Well, with those two starting wide receivers out, Trenton Leary had a huge game last week, six catches for 82 yards. So he started to work in with Jace Wilson a little bit, getting some of that confidence from Jace, and he started making some big plays. Well, that takes us to the end of the first quarter. TSU with the ball. And the lead, 7 nothing. We'll be right back. 
Kelly Blue Book Instant Cash Offer is an official offer to buy your car. Just enter your vehicle ID information, answer a couple questions, then receive a no-obligation offer to sell it or trade it. Then choose a dealer to purchase your car, schedule a time, and drive away with confidence. For all of the it's, kbb.com it. Sexy is yourself. It's just who you are. I feel the most comfortable right now in my skims. I am a mechanic and classic car builder. I am a nurse. Forklift driver. A legal apprentice. Restaurant server. I'm a flight attendant. And I'm a paramedic. I am a veteran. And I'm a chef. It's the only brawl that makes me feel fantastic. Comfortable. Free. Sexy. Light. Uplifted. With everything's in place. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone's wearing skims. The Subway Series menu is getting a new lineup of sandwiches. The Deli Heroes. There's fresh sliced turkey on the Titan Turkey. Fresh sliced ham on the Grand Slam ham. Five meats on the beef. And look at that double cheese. Try Subway's taste is refreshed yet. This month, join the new Subway MVP Rewards program and get rewarded. Get 50% off any footlong when you join Subway MVP Rewards. So many all-star options. It's just for Subway MVPs, right? You catch on quick, Herbert. Join now and get 50% off any footlong. The UPS store is not just a shipping store. We're the shipping store. The Leave the Packing to Us store. The We Understand this is more than a package store. We're the Pack It, Ship It, Guarantee It store. The Peace of Mind store. The Right When You Need Us store. We're the go to, right around the corner. We Ship It All store. The UPS store. Be unstoppable. When I started college, so many people warned me about credit cards. They just seemed really scary. When I needed a car, I realized that I needed to build credit. So I got the Chime Credit Builder card because I could safely build credit without being afraid of fees or interest. And there was no credit check. My score went up over 60 points and I bought my first car. As a busy college student, having a car is an absolute must. I feel like I could do anything. <laughs> my next goal, a 700 credit score. Join me at Chime.com. I've been loving Vegamore for the last two years. I, if you watch my videos, you know that I swear by their hair growth serum. Like seriously, I've seen insane results with this. So I have a few before photos of what my hairline used to look like, but this is what my hairline looks like now. It's completely filled in and it's from this hair serum. So I'm very consistent with this. I use this every single day. It's a clear formula. It's not going to make your hair oily or greasy. I really think you'll love it. Eat well the easy way with chef-crafted recipes from HelloFresh, designed to support a range of wellness goals. Enjoy calorie-smart lunches and dinners under 650 calories, or boost your protein intake with protein-smart meals featuring 38-plus grams per serving. Butch Alson Dorr and Jorge Vargas as we get set to start the second quarter. The two teams have switched sides now. TSU with the ball and the lead. As you look at some of the offense, you can see right there rushing yards for Florida A&M, 48 yards and 34 for the Tigers. As they go back to the running game, that is Ladarius Owens. And Owens is going to pick up another short gain inside. So a good carry by Owens as he tries to keep this drive alive. You know, he's closing in on 2,000 yards for his career. He entered this game today, Jorge, 624 yards shy of becoming the Tigers' all-time leading rusher. So that's a big honor for him. Third down now as Jace Wilson calling the signals. Now they put the receivers out in motion. Wilson's going to throw it. Completes his pass to Quay Davis. Davis tight ropes the sideline, and let's see where he went out of bounds. He's going to be close to those sticks, and they say it's a first down for the TSU Tigers. And again, they stack those receivers on the left. A great blocking by the receivers allowed him just enough to get that first down. Great job by the receivers blocking. So Jace Wilson leading the attack. Will throw it again. Now he has to pull it down, and he comes back the other way, finds Quay Davis again, and that's going to be a nice pickup. Call it another first down for the Tigers. I'll tell you, seven attempts, uh, five receptions for Jace Wilson. And right there, he just did a great job of coming down, looking, and it's still finding that receiver about his third option there. Great pass. TSU started the game with an up-tempo offense, and Wilson completes it to Davis again. He's found something there. 
And now Quay Davis will have to leave the game after making that catch because his helmet came off. But, boy, they, they've started to find that connection between those two guys. Yeah, and, again, I mean, they started this season with Andrew Boddy as a quarterback. They, they had a lot of thoughts. The offense revolved around him, how they set things up. And then, you know, Jace has been the quarterback since. And, and I mean, they've just been building around him, building around him. It looks like they finally got the offense they want around him, and he's executing great. Second down now for the Tigers. Give is to Owens. Owens still on his feet, spinning inside, and Owens gets some tough yardage inside for the Tigers. I will tell you, I don't know what the Tigers have done on, on working on spinning and keep your feet moving, but every time he gets the ball, watch him. Bam, he gets hit, he moves, spins, spins, gives himself another three, four yards. You know, the Tigers have gone to that up-tempo offense, and it's really... They've come out from the jump, from the beginning of the game. They've had this up-tempo offense, and you look at the play calling. The offensive coordinator, David Marsh, has done an outstanding job. I mean, they came in, obviously, with a good game plan because it is working. First and 10 now for the Tigers in the red zone. Gives it to Owens again, and Owens is going to be taken down. A big tackle over there by number six. Yeah, prior to that That run. is Sharif. C, who's also from Houston, by the way. Excuse me. For no, no, no. I apologize. Uh, six six yards of carry for Owens right before that no game. He's not going to like that one <laughs> on, on his stats. Sharif C, transfer from southeastern Louisiana, but uh, went, went to school here in Houston, Texas. This is home, so he's happy to be playing here. Second down now for the Tigers. Jace Wilson looking to pass it. He steps up, rolling out to his right. And now he just steps out of bounds. So Wilson strung that out for as about as long as he could. Then he just stepped off the field of play. Really, really like his decision making on that. I mean, there was nothing there. He didn't. He decided not to try to do anything crazy. He lived for the next play. And again, that's just good decision making. Yeah, you know, he had to step in for Andrew Body, who's now going through a redshirt year after he never could get that shoulder right. He spent the whole off season rehabbing, working hard. And now Jace has stepped in, and this team is starting to believe in him. Third down now for the Tigers. They give it to Owens. Owens has a little hole, still on his feet. The Darius Owens is close to the sticks. We'll see where they mark it, but a nice run by Owens. And he's been running with a lot of passion the last few weeks. Yeah, no question, but look at that offensive line of his. Dennis Jones, Thomas Brown, center Jake Nance creating that room for him, and he's doing a great job of exploding in there. Uh, to tell you, that offensive line looks really, really strong today. So fourth down for the Tigers, and it looks like they're going to go for the field goal. Curtis Falkenberg comes out now. They're going to set it down to where it would be a 21-yard field goal attempt by Falkenberg. We were watching him in the warm-ups, and he was hitting them from 48. Yeah, looks solid. So the 21-yard attempt... Hits the upright, and it comes back. Wow. You know, Ti Tiger's trying to add three more to that lead, but let's take another look. Kick goes up, and then it's doink right off the upright, and it goes down, a rejection. We're still 7-0, and we'll be right back. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. On the highest of seven hills in Tallahassee, Florida, sits a university that produces legends, neurosurgeons, business executives, princesses, comedians, 
movie moguls, NFL players, broadcast executives, and the conference champions. For the agricultural and mechanical university, you can get anywhere from FAMU. Go Tigers! 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 Well, that was an opportunity for the Tigers to pad their lead as Curtis Falkenberg missed that 21 yard field goal attempt so the ball goes over to Florida A&M the Rattlers on the attack Musa will throw it as a man inside it's complete and he is swung down that is Kobe Gross the big H back and what's significant about that missed field goal that was a 12 play drive covered 76 yards I mean it was a good movement of the football down the field and they did not get anything to show for what was an excellent drive yeah, and they mix it up really well. And, again, Larry Selwood's looking fantastic, and, and and so is Wilson. I mean, two guys just really doing all the right things right now. The play calling is fantastic. To come up with zero is rough. So call it five yards on that catch and run, and they go to Terrell Jennings, and the Tigers spill him in the backfield. Jacob Williams, one of the first Tigers to get there and make the stop. We mentioned before that young man had 13 tackles last week. Watch the other zero, Veramonte Pippins. He creates the log jam that allows him to be able to get in there and make that tackle. At the point of attack, big number zero <laughs> just just flushes that inside there. and then that it, ha it helps to have some big friends open some doors. 54 tackles is what Williams came into the game with today. Main thing about him, he has 12.5 tackles for loss. That is huge. So big third down now for A&M. Musa under some pressure. Now he steps out of the pocket. He's being chased. He's caught, and he's dropped at the 15-yard line. The ball comes out, but it was ruled down. But a great job by that Texas Southern defense as they got after Musa. Woo. Boy, when you say the heat is on, the heat was on. Musa kept looking for something, looking for something, and the Tigers just kept, kept coming. And he's lucky, truly, that, that uh, they just marked him down where he went down instead of the fumble. Yeah, Vir Viramont says Pippins had the pressure on first, and he got out of the pocket, and then he's caught there and spun down by Isaiah Bogarty. So the Rattlers will have to kick the football away. Trey Wilhoit is on to punt the football away, and TSU should end up with excellent field position after this kick. Trey Wilhoit's point, punt, Goes back to about the 35, and it's going to be returned out of bounds by Leary. Nice job, and TSU will have that excellent field position. They lead it 7 0. We're in Go to Old Navy and you'll save a toboggan full of buckaroonies. It's a real bada bing, bada boom situation. This Sunday through Tuesday only, get 50% off everything online only at OldNavy.com. Look, this deal is a steal, and so is the toboggan. I know because I stole it. Kelly Blue Book Instant Cash Offer is an official offer to buy your car. Just enter your vehicle ID information, answer a couple questions, then receive a no-obligation offer to sell it or trade it. Then choose a dealer to purchase your car, schedule a time, and drive away with confidence. For all of the it's, kbb.com it. Hungry Root is here, and I needed it because my fridge is super empty. I'm going to open the box. That's the exciting part. Hungry Root came through. And my refrigerator is packed. <laughs> coverage isn't right. What if I accidentally hit a food truck? What if it gets covered in empanadas? At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Thanks. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Introducing Popeye's new spicy truff chicken sandwich. Crispy chicken and truffle infused spicy mayo. 
How do you make sense out of something so fancy? By eating it. We don't make sense. We make chicken. Love that chicken from Popeyes. Eat well the easy way with chef-crafted recipes from HelloFresh, designed to support a range of wellness goals. Enjoy calorie-smart lunches and dinners under 650 calories, or boost your protein intake with protein-smart meals featuring 38 plus grams per serving. And if you're looking to eat more veggies, don't miss HelloFresh's new mouth-watering vegan options. It's time to take the work out of eating well. Go to HelloFresh.com. Welcome back, everyone. The TSU Tigers on the move, and they have the football and the lead with 8.53 to go here in the second quarter. Jace Wilson has gone all the way at quarterback today, done a really good job for the Tigers so far in this game. So he turns, fakes the handoff, has a man open. He threw the ball behind him. Was trying to hit Leary. Leary had a couple of steps, and that's why you saw the reaction. He thought he would still be running right now. Yeah, and, and again, if that ball was on target, that's actually one of the first misses by Chase Wilson as far as hitting his target was that one. He was way behind, and that could have been six right there. Yeah, his passing yards right at 700 yards this season. He's thrown for four touchdowns. That, after taking over for Andrew Body, who's going to redshirt, this will be a redshirt here for him. And this time the gift, the handoff, is to Owens again. Owens still on his feet. And what a big night. He's picking off right where he left off from last week. Ladarius Owens with the big run. The 5'9", 190-pound senior out of Alvin, Texas. Wow, they marked him like a yard back on that. But Owens is just a phenomenal right now. Electric and powerful. Picked up a big first down for the Tigers. Wilson looking to pass. Has a man near the sideline. That is complete. And that's another first down for TSU. So Wilson doing a good job of really managing this game and getting the ball to the open receivers, minus that one to Leary. Yeah. And I, th th that, that pass right there is such a long pass because it's from one side of the field to the other. And it was always scared me because you allow that defensive back to be able to break on that ball by the time it takes We're open the pass. Defense, number 58. This penalty will be hatched. The distance to the goal, automatic, first down. The penalty was against Anthony Dunn for Florida A&M. And once again, the Tigers are the beneficiaries of some sloppy play on defense by the number one defense in the swag. Well, you know, whether you disagree or, or agree with what is a roughing the passer, you got to be smart and go, okay, that's how they're calling it. i got to play a certain way today. And, that, and that's, just, that's just how you have to do it. That's Ja'Cory Howard this time on the carry for Texas Southern. He's going to pick up about three. Corey Howard's probably saying, hey, guys, don't, don't forget about me. Uh, I can run and lay, lay the hammer down as well. They got a great two-headed backfield, and the give is to Howard again. And Howard tries to pound his way inside, but there's no room right there. Just a great reaction right there. Dre Jones, the first Rattler player to get there and make the stop for that big defense. Yeah, big James Ash was there as well, 6'4", 280, out of Tampa, Florida, played at Wake Forest a bit, so... Okay, that brings us to the money down now. Third down for the Tigers. They can get a first down inside the five at around the four. Jace Wilson rows to his right, fires back, has his man. He's going to be very close to those sticks, depending on where they put it. It looked like he may have picked up the first down. Let's see. I think they put it about a half yard short. Wow, I thought he, yeah. I think the fact that he turned and tried to go again. So he's going to be just inches shy of that first down. I think I... And I love the rolling pocket here. Look, he throws over his shoulder, didn't even really get set, and throws an absolute strike. When he stopped and turned, tried to go again, that's where they marked it at. So Clint King Blanton on the reception, and now Tigers will go for it on fourth down. The give is to Ja'Cory Howard, and that big offensive line got enough of a surge, make it first and goal to go for the Tigers from TSU. Yeah, they didn't get tricky there. They just said, you know what, we're going to punch you right in the mouth and go straight forward. And so far, that offensive line for the Tigers looks fantastic. And Wilson goes quickly again. He gets his people set. They go back, and he hands it again to Howard, and Howard is stacked up and dropped. A great defensive play by the Rattlers. Yeah, he puts your hand on the helmet. He's getting a little bit tired right there because there's a lot coming at him. Dre Jones, big defensive lineman there for uh, the Rattlers. 
Second down. Goal to go for Texas Southern University. Wilson to pass. Throws into the end zone. Was trying to hit the back shoulder throw. Was going to Blanton again. The throw again was off the mark, though. He was trying to hit that back shoulder, and he threw it inside. Yeah, exactly. And Blanton's got to turn a little bit quicker there. But, I mean, again, he, you're right. It was to the inside. It should have been on the outside. So here we are again. They're going quick, so we're getting to third down <laughs> very quickly. But another big third down for TSU. They've been down here a lot here in the first half. Jace Wilson on third and goal to go. Lofts it high. Back of the end zone. Leary catches. It's a touchdown for the Tigers from Texas Southern. What a catch by Trenton Leary. And how about the pass from Jace Wilson right on the money. Ooh, I'll tell you what, he did not give himself any room for error there. In that, when you talk about throwing for the back corner of the end zone, it was the back, back, back corner of the end zone. Watch, that's a floater big time. Gives the receiver plenty of time to make the adjustments. But look, reaches out, just keeps his legs in for the touchdown. That's why you practice throwing it in the bucket. You know, you just... <laughs> You're dropping it in on a dime. That was a beautiful pass. The extra point attempt by Falkenberg is good. And the TSU Tigers have extended their lead. Behind that guy, Trenton Leary, who came up with a great touchdown catch. We'll be right back. It's 14-0 TSU in the second quarter. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School. We're powered by purpose. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. Chastitos Hardy Dippers. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. And you're taking a look at Trenton Leary on the bench. He's getting a well-deserved rest after catching that touchdown pass. That last drive by the TSU Tigers, 10 plays, 55 yards, and it took them 2 minutes and 36 seconds before Jace Wilson hit Trenton Leary 4 yards on the touchdown. So the kick from the Tigers goes deep. And the Rattlers will bring it back on the return. At the 20, still on his feet, trying to bounce it to the outside. That is Jamari A. Gassett on the return for Florida A&M. But so far, the TSU Tigers have come out, and they brought their A game tonight. Oh, they sure did. Offensively, listen to this, Butch. 28 plays, 158 yards, averaging 5.64 a play. The Rattlers on the other side of that have just 95 yards of offense, 3.8. A play that tells you how good the defense is playing for the Tigers and their offense right now they are dominating this game well they tell you on any given night in the slack because you never know what can happen and we're very early in this game we have 608 to go in the second quarter 
and the Texas Southern Tigers lead it 14-0. So here come the Rattlers, and they go to the running attack and a big play in the backfield by Texas Southern University. That is Elinus Noel, the young man, the transfer from Nickel State coming up with a huge play. 6-2, Woo! He can move. But quickness. <laughs> I was going to say, he's got that burst for a big guy. May not be able to run more than 10 yards quick. But boy, he got that two, three yards. He can burst. 6-3, 240, 245, whatever it is. But he's got that quickness. A big play for a loss of two in the backfield. So second down for the Rattlers. They go back to the running game. He was hit in the backfield, spun away from Williams. Ball is out. It's a fumble on the play. He bounced off a couple of would-be tacklers, but he managed to get back on that one. That was a very dangerous play for the Rattlers. That was Leland Wilhoyt, who lost the handle on the football, but he managed to get back on it. Watch Big Zero right there. He shuts down that play. It's supposed to come his way, Pippins. He sends it back the other way, and the rest of his teammates come in there to tidy up. So now Musa looking at a third and long. And now we have a stoppage of play on the field. We have a timeout call by Texas Southern. So Tigers want to stop it a little bit with 4.52 to go. I mean, if you're Willie Simmons over there on the sidelines, I mean, this season, they're not used to this. No. <laughs> they're not used to this at all. We're going to be back in a minute right now. Texas Southern Tigers. Stitch Fix. I'd like to thank my stylist for making me look so amazing. For taking care of the shopping so I can take care of this. It's really convenient. For sending looks that work for me and my budget. For getting my fit just right. Thanks to my stylist, getting dressed is so easy. Because let's get real. I couldn't make this happen on my own. I'd like to thank my stylist for turning me on to new looks. My stylist just gets me. They get me. And me. Me. They'll get you too. Take your style quiz today. Want to make your presentation wow with Canva, you can amaze the crowd. Want to brainstorm? Put your pencils down. Online whiteboards, ideas all around. Woo! Coming in hot with a Canva doc. Docs to decks, I like it a lot. Design a website quick in minutes. Canva videos too, one-stop shop. You can design with ease. Print with free delivery. Make your work feel like a breeze. Beautiful templates, yes please. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can get the job done, play and have fun. What you design today at Canva.com. Hey, Dad. Hmm? What's the ocean like? Are there animals living underwater? Is the ocean warm? Yeah, it um, can be very warm. You were made to remember some days forever. We were made to help you find the best way there. What if my coverage isn't right? What if I accidentally hit a food truck? What if it gets covered in empanadas? At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Thanks. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Introducing Popeye's new spicy truff chicken sandwich. Crispy chicken and truffle infused spicy mayo. How do you make sense out of something so fancy? By eating it, we don't make sense. We make chicken. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Butch Alson Dorr and Jorge Vargas with you in Houston, Texas tonight. Florida A&M taking on the Texas Southern Tigers right now. 14 zip. TSU in front with the Rattlers looking at a third and 12 to keep this drive alive. So Musa will pass it. Had some time. Fires and a great defensive play to break that thing up. That was Canary Simmons again. And by the way, Jorge, Canary Simmons was also the guy who forced the fumble on the previous play. Yeah, I'll tell you, he's been everywhere. I mentioned that earlier. I mean, he just seems to find the ball everywhere. Also got some help from Xavier Player. Look at both of them just kind of right there, boxing in the receiver, where there will be nothing had there today. Nicholas, and again, Musa just 56 yards passing. Nicholas Dixon was the intended receiver. But he couldn't get that. So we'll get another look here at Trey Wilhoyt. He's a young man who's also kind of a newlywed, and we'll talk about that a little later in the show. But he got married recently. Wilhoyt will kick the football away. Skies it high. 
Fair catch called for and made for the TSU Tigers right near the 45-yard line. That was Trenton Leary on the punt. And so the Tigers from TSU, they have the lead, and now they will take over with great field position with an opportunity to maybe pad that lead. Well, again, they, they just want to execute their offense like they have. I think the play calls have been good. It's been very diverse. Uh, they kept the Rattlers on their heels about what's coming next. We could see this coming because if you look at some of the totals from last week when TSU spoiled Bethune-Cookman's homecoming, 388 total yards, 199 yards rushing, and 189 passing to beat Bethune-Cookman in that game. So first and 10. They go to Wilt, to Owens, Ladarius Owens with a big hole, and Owens rips off a huge Ladarius run Owens. for Ladarius Owens. Oh. Wow. Hey. About 25, 26 yards right there for Ladarius Owens, and the Tigers get quickly to the line. He's got the three receivers to the top of your screen, but he hands it back to Owens again, and this time... Owens is going to be corralled after a gain of about one. He's caught by the Rattlers. And by the way, Owens is the newlywed also. So it's wow. some of that going around. <laughs> Whatever that is, that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, <laughs> Coach Simmons talked about that. It adds some maturity to your players when you have a wife and family. And there's there's several going on there. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. But uh, maturity, you have to get mature. You start to get, get a wife. So second and nine, and there's movement up front. The Tigers say the Rattlers jumped. The Rattlers say the Tigers moved. We'll see what Tony Ross says, because that's the only opinion that matters here tonight. I thought it was the Rattlers. We'll see if I'm right or not. Oh, no, I'm wrong. All start. Offense, number 68. Tigers must have twitched. Five yard penalty. It's second down. It doesn't take much. So that'll be five yards against TSU. Let's take another look and see if we can spot it. Wow. Yeah, I didn't I didn't see I didn't movement see at all. There. So call it second and fifteen. Pass is tipped and almost intercepted. He was trying to hit Leary again, but that hung up just a tad after it was tipped. And number twenty, Jordan Moore almost came up with that. Again, good good defensive awareness for the Rattlers. And now they've this for the first time the Tigers are going to be have a real long third down. Can they execute on this type of play here? Yeah, it's up to that dark cloud defense to come up here and make a big play. Make a play for your offense right now. Your offense is struggling a little bit. You know, you got the number one defense in the conference. It's, it's time for them to make a play. Let's see if they can come up with it. Third and about 15 to go for a first down. Wilson under pressure. He's hit. And the black cloud defense, it was a black cloud over Jace Wilson that time as he goes down. Gentle Hunt in the backfield with the sack. I don't know if he's got the right name, Gentle Hunt. I don't know about Gentle Hunt to ask Wilson if that was Gentle or not. But again, big stop for the Rattlers. That defense flexes its muscles, not only skips a stop, but they push him way back by, what, 12 yards or something. So, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a big stop now, and they'll get the ball back. You had Alan Smith, who forced him up in the pocket, right into the waiting arms of Gentle Hunt. So the sack goes to the Rattlers, and that dark cloud defense comes up with a huge, huge play as Patrick Helen comes on to punt the football away. But we do have a stoppage in play right there as you see Helen coming over to the sideline. 2.32 to go here in the first half. Delay game. Offense. Number 49, five-yard penalty. It's fourth down. And that was done on purpose to give Helen a little more room Correct. to work with. Jamari A. Shereed back to return the punt for the Rattlers. Rattlers go to the return. They have a return on, but Shereed has to call for the fair catch, and he makes it at the 12-yard line. So Jeremy Musa and company will take over, 2.24 to go, and they will start with the football. They're going to be marked down at the 13-yard line. What do they have to do to get this offense going at this point? Well, I think that's where, it, I think, you know, the success for the Tigers really has been about their offensive line doing really well, and I think the Rattlers, at some point, you just got to say, hey, guys, we're going to keep it real simple here. We're going to run right at them, or we're going to do, you know, pick your 
two best plays and say, we're going to run it, we're going to attack, get some success, start to create a rhythm so they can do something bigger on down the road. But right now, you're right, they, they are not, they don't, they're not comfortable at all. And that's, you know, confidence to the, to the Tigers. Rattlers on first down go to the reverse. Some room on the outside. It's going to be a nice run for Sharid. As he gets close to the sticks, not a first down, but a nice run on first down as the clock continues to click down. And the Rattlers pick up the pace a little bit. Back to the run. And the TSU defense is standing tall inside, so... Yeah, the Rattlers for sure here, right? With time running out in this half, you know, minute 53 here, uh, they want to keep this offensive drive going and wind up with some points. However they wind up, they want to get on the board. But they don't want to give the ball back to the Tigers for sure. So every first down matters. So the clock has been restarted. It's going to give him the first down on that last run. So he did pick up the first down. First and 10 for Florida A&M. Pass inside. Complete. That'll be good enough for a gain of nine on the play. That went to Sharid also. Jamari A. Sharid on the reception. Well, he's been a busy man, whether it's running the ball. He's a target no matter what, running the ball or in the passing game. And because he's a guy who can just break away at any point. Came into the game with 26 receptions. He's added to that since then. The transfer from Texas State calls Houston, Texas home. Second and a long yard. Call it two. Musa floats one inside. He had his man open. He was trying to hit Dixon. Nicholas Dixon. He might have been a little too high again. Yeah, he was just, he was way over the top. He's very lucky there wasn't a safety sitting up top there because that would have been an easy pickings. The safety was inside, not to the outside. It's funny. When we were asking Coach Clarence Thomas this week, how do you stop Musa? I mean, what do you do to stop Musa? He said, we just got to pressure him. We have to get some people in his face, and, and they're getting enough people around him so they're having an effect so far here in the first half. And I think their coverage has been really, really good. I mean, they, they have not had too many you know, open guys floating. And, again, Moose has missed those when they've been open, but defensively it's been fantastic. The pitch this time on third down, and they're going to have the first down as Kelvin Dean picks it up for Florida A&M, clocked down to 53 seconds it'll start once the official marks it down and now it's rolling so the rattlers taking their time maybe we're seeing some of that maturity you were talking about right here as musa looking to throw it goes downfield has his receiver and it's going to be a touchdown for the rattlers number two jamari gassett on the catch and run and you know we talk about that maturity and you talk about that patience and it paid off right there yeah you know you have to know that hey things aren't going well we just got to stay with the game plan we got to stay with our our plays and, and we're gonna make something happen and i'll tell you what i mean what a great great job for the rattlers to get on the board with a touchdown and it's it's kind of a heartbreaker for the tigers of how dominant they've been in the first half yeah you saw willie simmons over there on the sidelines and he walked over to gassett Gave him a big hug after that and said, thank you very much, sir. They're back in this ball game, just like that, with 33 seconds to go. And what a play. You know, they came out, didn't really show what you might have thought was a sense of urgency, but they had a plan, and they executed. And the extra point attempt is good. But what a drive. I mean, that was just an incredible drive. Let's take another look because Musa made this happen with his patience in the pocket. Yeah, and he just relaxes. The offensive line does a great job. And again, look, he just outruns that defender. He is gone. I mean, it's just, there's, there's just, you know, Perry Wells just could not keep up with him. And it was a touchdown. Again, the perfect ball thrown there where he could catch it in stride and go to the touchdown. Well, you said it, the, the perfect ball, ball as we take a look at the scoring drive. That was six plays. And it covered 87 yards, and it took them one minute and 51 seconds to convert on that touchdown to put the Rattlers right back in the ball game. Well, you know what, Butch? I lied to you. I said the Rattlers didn't want the Tigers to get back the ball. Well, that was before I knew they were going to score with 151 <laughs> and score that fast. So they do have to give the ball back here on the kickoff. But the Tigers will just have 33 seconds 
to see what they're going to do with it. Again, yeah. a good return would change everything right here. You know, I said it was six plays and covered 87 yards, but it was six plays that covered 87 yards under the gun with the clock ticking down here in the first half. So that is what you call a money drive, and it puts the Rattlers right back in this thing as they kick it deep, and it's going to go through the end zone, and the TSU Tigers will take over on their 25. You can see the score in the last matchup. That was back in 2017, and the Rattlers came out on top, 29-7. to And as you look at the statistics there, pretty close, but that time of possession is telling. Well, total yards, 415 yeah. yards for the Rattlers. Woo. They that double is, them up. Yeah, that is, that is dominating for sure. I think with that drive, obviously the points for the Rattlers uh, in this game here is important because obviously you go into halftime, it's a different feeling. Coaches are not only to rip able to, we'll say, uh, rip, rip them apart a bit, but also be able to say that a boy, hey, we're starting to get our game. You got some, get some, you know, some tough love, and then you're able to say, here's where we're going, guys. Uh, let's keep our eye on the prize. That touchdown pass, by the way, 58 yards on the bomb from Musa to Gassett, and the Tigers will run it right up the middle, and they will let the clock run down. It is still rolling, and TSU may just take this lead to the locker room. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to do, and I, I can't say that I disagree with them, although they've had such success in a lot of their offensive plays. Wow, it has been a, almost a perfect first half for the TSU Tigers. As the clock ticks down, that will do it. That is the end of the first half. It was almost perfect for the TSU Tigers, except for the last minute and 51 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, that, that, that didn't do it. Then they had the one missed field goal as well, so they left three out there. Uh, and we'll see if that comes to haunt them later. But what a great first half of football, truly, by the Tigers. Yeah, Jeremy Musa put his team right back in the game with that touchdown pass. We'll be back. When you're launching a new product with a tight deadline. Two weeks? Grammarly's tone suggestions can help motivate your team with a positive approach. Because you know we got work to do. Looking good, team. When it's time to pitch your product to clients, a more personable and friendly approach can help sell it. And look, they bought it all. With Grammarly, getting the tone just right makes a big impact on your team's success. Download at Grammarly.com today. Go to Old Navy and you'll save a toboggan full of buckaroonies. It's a real bada-bing, bada-boom situation. This Sunday through Tuesday only, get 50% off everything. Online only at OldNavy.com. Look, this deal is a steal. And so is the toboggan. I know because I stole it. There he is. It's right here. Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. That should hold it for now. Mm. What should we do? I know what to do. You do? I'm going to cashnetusa.com. I can apply in minutes, and if approved, we can have the money in our account as soon as the same business day. You're my hero. Saving the day is easy with Cashnet USA. When you need money fast, be the hero. Go to cashnetusa.com to apply for the money you need now. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we've helped hunters gear up for the season for over six decades. So as you prep for this year's hunt, shop unbeatable deals on supplies to make your trip successful. Like 10 packs of Grabber hand warmers, just $5.99. Get vehicles ready for hunting travel with a fresh Farm and Fleet battery starting at $43.99. And 5 quarts of Sitco SuperGuard synthetic motor oil, $21.99 after sale and rebate. Rewards members save an extra 2 bucks. This is one of the millions of new and used cars you can find on Auto Trader. You can find cars like the ones on your favorite show. Oh, no. I bet I can even find the cars in my feet. Sure can. Hey, look at you. Floors by day, student by night. Student by day, baker by night. PT by dawn, dean's list by dusk. Crushing classwork online during the morning rush. Always powered by Penn State World Campus. Since 1998, we've led the charge in online education, offering access to more than 175 in-demand programs taught by our expert faculty. Penn State World Campus delivers on your time. Hey, Cal. Hmm? What do you 
What's the ocean like? Are there animals living underwater? Is the ocean warm? Yeah, it um, can be very warm. You were made to remember some days forever. We were made to help you find the best way there. Becca? Oh, hi. Hi. I'm Brian. Brian. It's halftime in Houston, and the 19th-ranked Florida A&M Rattlers find themselves trailing the Texas Southern Tigers 14-7. That was at the half, and boy, I tell you what, Jorge, let's talk about the first half because we saw a lot of good defensive play, a lot of good offensive play, but what surprised you the most about what transpired here in the first half? Well, I'm, I'm just, you know, this is no... It, it, what surprised me is how together the Tigers looked as far as coming together. And Coach Clarence McKinney earlier in the week talked to us about them finding their identity, the team coming together together uh, behind Wilson, uh, Jace Wilson as a quarterback. And you could see that forming, and they're, and they're, they're different than when we saw them at the beginning of the season against Prairie and m That offense has changed, and the execution level has been fantastic offensively. And then defensively, they're just getting stronger and better. And at the point of attack, their run game was a little weak defense, and now it's super, super strong. Let me ask you quickly about Jace Wilson, because he's taken over since Andrew Body got hurt with the injured shoulder, the red shirt coming there. Two touchdown passes tonight. Looks like he's getting better and better each week. Well, there's several times tonight you've seen him go to the third and fourth options under pressure. So he was having to move around in the pocket and find that third or fourth receiver. So that shows great maturity in a, in a short period of time of running this offense. And the veteran Musa had the 58-yard TD strike right before the half. So we're going to take another timeout. We'll be back, and hopefully we'll have some fan action to take. Buying a car from Vroom is so easy. All you need is a phone and a finger. Just go to Vroom.com, scroll through thousands of cars, then tap to buy. That's it. No sales speak, no wasted time. Go to Vroom.com and pick your favorites. It's hard to run a business on your own. With Shopify, you have everything you need to set up your online store, to connect with customers, and to bring your dream business to life. Because when we work together, the future is bright. These days, your customers are not just down the hall. They are all over the world. So cute. It doesn't have to be lonely at the top. Join the millions to find success on their own terms. Start your journey with a free trial today. When I started college, so many people warned me about credit cards. They just seemed really scary. When I needed a car, I realized that I needed to build credit. So I got the Chime Credit Builder card because I could safely build credit without being afraid of fees or interest. And there was no credit check. My score went up over 60 points and I bought my first car. As a busy college student, having a car is an absolute must. I feel like I could do anything. <laughs> my next goal, a 700 credit score. Join me at Chime.com. Subway refreshed everything, and now they're slicing their deli meats fresh. That's why the new Subway Series subs are preferred by this QB. And preferred by his old backup QB. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Have you been behind me this whole time? Yep. This month, join the new Subway MVP Rewards program and get rewarded. Get 50% off any foot long when you join Subway MVP Rewards. So many all-star options. It's just for Subway MVPs, right? You catch on quick, Herbert. Join now and get 50% off any foot long. My hair started thinning in my early 20s. I was genetically predisposed. I took a pharmaceutical drug, but unfortunately I suffered from sexual dysfunction. We needed to find a solution. Having to choose between my hair and my health was not really a fair choice. That really was the birth of Nutrafol. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. It's never too late to improve your hair health. Start your hair growth journey at Nutrafol.com slash men. Our body is an amazing chemical laboratory. When you give it the right chemistry, it functions the best. Balance of Nature is the ultimate whole fruit and vegetable chemistry. Go to balanceofnature.com to get your special offer.
I love the fact that HelloFresh always sent me something different that I never would have made. The most amazing recipes delivered right to your door. Wide variety, pre-portioned ingredients that help make sure you don't waste money on excess food. HelloFresh gives you all you need to make a really delicious meal right at home. They have made my life so much easier. Easy, affordable, really, really good and flavorful. Tastes so good. Oh my God. Go to HelloFresh.com slash GoHulu and use code GoHulu to get this last chance fall offer. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. Introducing 24-7 Lifeguard Protection, only from Simply Safe. This exclusive technology allows Simply Safe agents to help stop crime in real time by speaking through the new Smart Alarm indoor camera. Stop. This is Simply Safe. Police are on their way. For instant intruder deterrence and faster police response. Police have arrived. Your home is safe. Advanced home security, 24-7. Welcome back to Shell Energy Stadium. I'm Butch Alcindor, along with Jorge Vargas. We're at the half, and as you can see on your screen, Texas Southern surprising a lot of people tonight with a 14-7 lead at the half. Well, let's talk about some SWAC news and notes now, if we can. Our news and notes brought to you by GM, and of course, the SWAC Weekly Bowling Honors. How about that? They named Alabama State's Savannah Razor and Peyton Hartgrove for SWAC's Bowling Weekly Honors this week for their outstanding performances during the past week of competition. Also this week, congratulations goes out to the SWAC Women's Golf, and you see the honorees there, and also for the SWAC Women's Volleyball. Our congratulations go out to all in the SWAC News and Notes brought to you tonight by GM. Of course, we're one of the late starters in the SWAC today, so let's check out the scoreboard. You can see Alcorn State with a big win over Arkansas Pine Bluff, 31-7. Jackson State knocking off Mississippi Valley, 21-6. And then 28-18, Bethune-Cookman had a late rally against Southern, but it came up just a little short. That was a that was a really interesting game right there. A little bit of a barn burner towards the end, but Southern goes in and hangs on. That's that's certainly uh, tough on Bethune. And that scoreboard was brought to you by Pepsi. Let's take a look at what's coming up next in the SWAC. That would be Week Nine. Also brought to you by Pepsi, and you get some nice matchups there: Mississippi Valley versus Alcorn, Jackson State at Arkansas Pine Bluff, Bethune Cookman at Grambling. Don't sleep on the Wildcats. Alabama A&M, Alabama State. That is always a great game. And then how about Prairie View going down to face Florida A&M and Texas Southern will be in Baton Rouge. Yeah, I think that uh, Prairie View A&M, Florida A&M game. That that's going to be. Uh, one heck of a battle, and kid, you get two Southern, <laughs> Texas Southern against Southern. Those are the, those are probably the two games that I think will be the, uh, the, the most, the, the craziest, I guess, on the schedule right there. Yeah, you can look at all of those games, and you just, you just never know. I think I said it earlier tonight. Any given night in the SWAC, something can happen. We're going to pause for another timeout now. 14-7, Texas Southern out. Of Sheldon. We think you might be overreacting to our ads for no-shells pistachios. Ditch the shells? Okay, strip. What? You ditch your shells. Okay, yeah, that's No, fine. guys, I take it back. You want the show? No. You got no the show. show. <laughs> NFL football, Little Caesars, and my lucky chair. I'm not changing anything. Morning, girl. Morning, trash. Yeah. Good night, honey. Good night. Then over here with the gross premium market. Yeah, questions? George Kittle, what keeps you going all season long? Little Caesars Pizza, and of course my guy Daryl and his lucky chair. Yes! Do you hear that, Susan? That's because of the chair. Daryl gets it. He knows the four-quarter calzone from Little Caesars is officially delicious. Pizza, pizza. I have just started using Canva, and wow. Ooh. It's just me and Canva video. Today I'm designing a Canva website. Thing. This Canva doc is so visual. Canva whiteboards really get our ideas flowing. Just needs to feel a little more us. What will you design today? At canva.com. Choosing between my hair and sex drive? Not anymore. Support visibly thicker, fuller hair with 100% drug-free hair growth supplements.
Start your hair growth journey at Nutrafol.com slash men. financing with the K Jewelers credit card. Some people just know what road to take. Turn left. Not happening. Take the next exit. Don't think I will, disembodied voice. Recalculating. You're not from around here, so you don't know the back roads. Those are the people who know safe drivers save 40% with Allstate. Remember why you became a nurse? You wanted to help people. And girl, you're just getting started. You know what's next. Getting your graduate degree, that's how you can change this place for the better. For yourself, your patients, the whole community. You want to make change happen? Walden University is all about change. It's time. Walden University, set a course for change. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we've helped hunters gear up for the season for over six decades. So as you prep for this year's hunt, shop unbeatable deals on supplies to make your trip successful. Like $10 off select men's insulated hunting jackets and bibs. This 50-foot yellow jacket extension cord, only $32.99. Stay warm indoors with this utility heater, just $22.99. And 40-pound bags of Easy Heat wood fuel pellets, $4.99 each. We are still at the half with the TSU Tigers, as you can see out front, 14-7 over Florida A&M. And TSU really came out to play tonight to take on the Rattlers at home. Let's take a look at some of the first half action and show you how we got to that 14-7 score. We'll start with the Tigers with the football, and that's Chase Wilson with a touchdown pass to Jaron Johnson, 7-0 Texas Southern. And then Musa is intercepted in the back of the end zone right there by Xavier Player. And then this, an attempted field goal by the Tigers is no good, but they come right back. And look at this perfect pass into the corner to Leary for the touchdown, Trenton Leary. And then Musa would finish it off. In style, 58 yards downfield with the touchdown to Gassett. And that takes us to our 14-7 score. That happened late in the first half. He scored with about 30 seconds to go in the first half. Yeah, what a beautiful pass. Gassett didn't even have to break stride at all. And, and again, it's an evenly matched game now. Now you got with that pass, before TSU had the, the lopsided offensive production, that pass now you're basically evening 182 to 195. I, I think the real difference here is Ladarius Owens for TSU. Uh, he has 101 yards rushing all on his own himself, and he has just been phenomenal. And he loosens up that defense for the passing game of the Tigers, and that's been a big difference here. It has been a big difference, and when you go by that last drive, Florida A&M has actually taken over the time of possession, which was surprising because TSU, I mean, fair to say, they pretty much dominated most of the first half except for the last half of the second quarter. Well, I think the big thing on time of possession there, we, get, we, we kind of forget that Rattler's drive that wound up in an interception, right, because that drive didn't, it wasn't fruitful. You can forget about the yards that went with that and stuff. So I think that's what, in my mind, thinking about it now, I realize, well, their offense still was moving. It just didn't get, uh, you know, a payoff on that one. But, again, the Tigers didn't get paid off on the missed field goals, right? So that was the time that they missed a field goal there. That was the only thing they really had an issue with today. Let's take another timeout. We'll be right back. 14-7, Texas Southern leading. Hair has been a little stressed out about her holiday to-dos, but you don't need more tinsel, Kate. You need Shutterfly. Shutterfly makes it easy to create a holiday card that pops with options like double thick cardstock, foil accents. They'll even address your cards for you. Make it great. Make it easy. Make it Shutterfly. Make it more tinsel? Nope. No. 
Get 40% off everything with code CARDS40 at Shutterfly. Some people just know there's a podcast about that. Are you listening to a podcast? Yeah, but it's about multitasking, which I'm trying to do. I get you one ear and maybe I should do a podcast. Those are the people who know you're in good hands with Allstate. Is HelloFresh worth the price? Absolutely. Cooking with HelloFresh helps save me time and money while juggling a busy schedule. All of the ingredients come pre-portioned for each recipe and delivered right to my door. It's cheaper than grocery shopping, plus I get to skip the trip and start cooking whenever it's convenient. Did I mention it's 25% cheaper than takeout? Give yourself a break. Order HelloFresh and try it for yourself. Go to HelloFresh.com slash GoHulu and use code GoHulu to get this last chance fall offer. Wrap up your holiday shopping early with Zales. Take 30% off everything and save big on the best gifts. Only at Zales. At Consumer Cellular, we offer amazing 5G coverage backed up by incredible customer service. But that wouldn't mean much without super low prices. You already know we're up to half as much as the largest carriers. But guess what? AARP members can save even more. Yahoo! Uh-oh. Switch to Consumer Cellular now and get unlimited talk and text with a flexible data plan starting at only $20 a month. Blood, sweat, and tears of joy for three times the electrolytes and zero sugar in one hydrating stick. Mmm, zero. Liquid IV, real hydrating, now and sugar-free. Remember why you became a nurse? You wanted to help people. And girl, you're just getting started. You know what's next. Getting your graduate degree, that's how you can change this place for the better. For yourself, your patients, the whole community. You want to make change happen? Walden University is all about change. It's time. Walden University, set a course for change. Nothing scary about Energizer Ultimate Lithium, the number one longest lasting double A battery. We are getting set to start the second half here in Houston, Texas tonight with the Texas Southern Tigers out in front, 14-7 to over the 19th-ranked Rattlers from Florida A&M. Check out this video. How about this? You know, you hear about these student-athletes, what they do on the field. Well, what about what they do off the field? The Tigers from Texas Southern going over to the Houston Food Bank to volunteer and do their part to get food out to the needy needy here in the Houston area. Yeah, and what they're doing is making predetermined boxes for the families that come and get them, have them already prepared, right? That's a big, huge help for the food banks across the United States, and they did it right here uh, at the Houston Food Bank, and again, it uh, bonds the team together, but also shows the community that, hey, this school is about the community and giving back, and again, nothing better than making sure families get well, back. And it says a lot about the young men sure. volunteering on their own time Giving back and public service is always a good thing, and to see them doing that, that's just fantastic. And we tip our hats to Texas Southern University, but how about this young man, speaking of the players, Ladarius Owens, what a first half he had. 14 carries, 104 total yards there for the first half. Just an outstanding half. Well, you know, it's funny. He came in, and I mentioned, you know, 7.2 a carry last week, you know, all that and thought, okay, there's no way he can touch that today, not going against the Rattlers, and he's, he's up 0.2, 7.4 a carry. That's big time for your offense. Let me get you to talk quickly about what could Clarence McKinney have said at halftime because you know it's coming from yep. Florida AM. They're going to bring yeah. it to start the second half. And, again, that's where, you know, two halves, and, again, in a lot of football games you look like you feel like two different teams showed up, and what the Tigers have to do is, is coach you say, look, what you did was great. But if you don't maintain the focus and you don't maintain the intensity, we're going to get hammered, right? Or, we're, we're, you know, they're going to come at us. Know they're coming at us and be ready for it. Gustavo Ramiro 
Gustavo Ramiro kicks it out of bounds, so that will be a penalty against Texas Southern. So that is not the ideal way they wanted to start this half of football. You know, and it's funny because little things make big things, right? So you have to be pay attention to the details. And I know Coach Simmons talked about that a lot, was that the details, you know, make the difference for his team. They start getting distracted. They don't think about it. They, they think they're, they're thinking ahead. So they've really just got to focus on each detail, each play, and, 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 and execute. And I thought the Tigers did a great job executing in the first half. And I thought their whatever they, their homework that that coaching staff did was phenomenal in the way they approached attacking the Rattlers. And then it's one thing to have a great game plan, but to have your team pull it off. That's what's happened. But now we're at a new half. Can you maintain it? And what adjustments does the Rattlers make? Well, I've known Willie Simmons for a long time, you know, way back to when he was the head coach at Prairie View. And I can tell you right now, it wasn't a quiet locker room <laughs> over there for Florida a &M. He's intense. So, uh, yeah. you know, I, it'll be interesting to see. And Texas Southern knows that it's going to come after him right here on this first drive to get something going in the second half. So the Rattlers have the football to start the third quarter. Ball's up at the 35 after the penalty on the kickoff that went out of bounds. You can see a lot of the formation shifts for the Rattlers. They do a lot of this, make it make it really tough on the defense. Here comes Jamari Asha Reed on the jet sweep. And he couldn't bounce. It's still on his feet. Not down yet, and he's out of bounds. Picked up the first down. That was some tremendous balance. On that play by Jamari A. Sharif. thought he was going to hyperextend his own knee on the way he twists. Watch him coming up here. And as he gets hit, watch his, the way he lands on that leg. I thought he was going to hyperextend it, but, man, he just keeps going. Great balance. I don't know that I've ever seen that much motion before a play call on that particular play. They were in, like, seven different positions before they started the motion on that play. They had a lot going on there. And, of course, now he's marked us maybe a yard shy of the first down. So call it second and one for the Rattlers. After that run by Jamari A. Sharid on the jet sweep coming around. The power to the right side there, big time. They go to Yant. Carries. He got a, he has a lot of room on the outside, and he has the first down for the Rattlers. That was one of those things. They, they set up strong right, and they ran right. <laughs> you know, I think we're going to see uh, momentum is such a powerful thing in a football game. And the momentum was with Texas Southern for the whole first half until halfway through that second quarter. And then on that last drive for Florida A&M to get a touchdown, it seems like it's kind of flipped a little bit. Well, we're, you know, we're going to see how the, the again, I think uh, deliberate is what I'm seeing real quickly out of the Rattlers right now. Moose on first and 10. Gives to Yant. He's caught and dropped. Jacob Williams got there first, but he spun away from Williams, but he did not get far away. Has good recovery by that Texas Southern defense. And again, the Tiger defense at the point of attack have been really, really good all day. They have to maintain that and keep that keep the Rattlers' offensive line having to really, really work. Musa will have three wide receivers to his left. Also has his running back, Jacquez Yant, to his left also. He's going to pitch it to Yant. Tries to turn the corner, nothing doing because Jacob Williams is in the backfield. That's another tackle for loss for Jacob Williams. Yeah, him and he was just absolutely crushing. And Amari Harris comes over the top just to help finish cleaning up. But Williams did a great job. And again, he read that play from exactly when it happened. It's supposed to be a quick pitch to get outside. He would not allow it. Yeah, he's off to a fantastic year. We were talking about Jason Williams. Of course, that's Booker, who just checked into the game a couple of plays ago, helping out on the play. But Jacob Williams, man, he could be the most valuable defensive player in the conference, the way he's playing so far this year. So how about this? Third down now. Third and eight to go for the Rattlers. Musa fires underneath, has his receiver still on his feet, and now he's not going to make it. You know, initially when he first caught the ball, he was right at the sticks, but then he tried to make that move. He's going to lose a yard, so that should make it fourth and about one for the first down for the Rattlers. Yeah, when you're a receiver and you reposition and start, when you get knocked back and then you turn around and start running back again, that's the new initiative of your of your momentum, and that's your new marking. And Again, he was about a, 
half yard, making the first down, and then wound up being short. That was Gassett on the catch there, and now Florida A&M still has the offensive team on the field. They got the big back in the backfield. That's Yant. He's going to take it, and he's going to keep it, and Yant makes a great cut and gets the first down, and that was all on Jacques Yant. (laughs) Because he, it looked like it was stopped up. He made a nice move to cut back and pick up that first down. Yeah, and it was like uh, uh, he wasn't moving super fast or any quick cuts or anything. But he did a great job. Yeah, Moose, the quarterback, takes off and goes wide. So you know it's coming to him. <laughs> and then again, he just kind of uh, moseys his way. I don't know if that's the right way, but he was going to go right, designed for right. And he saw the little seam and then just runs like a truck. Yeah, he's 235. A little wildcat action with a, with a 235-pounder. Works out every time on third and short, unfair, isn't it? on fourth and short, and that's what it was that time. So first and ten for the Rattlers. Musa will look to pass this one. Has a blitz coming. He gets it off, throws it deep, and a little, they kind of misconnected there. Jamari A. Sharid went inside. The football came on the outside, and it goes down as an incomplete pass. Yeah, Perry Wells actually... If he'd have looked a little bit earlier, he might have had a better shot at that ball. But it was way, it was like three, four yards off where the receiver was. And again, like you said, maybe he was supposed to dip a little right instead of left. And they were certainly not in good communication there. So it goes down as a long, incomplete pass. Second down coming up now for the Rattlers. And again, a lot of that motion before the snap. You've seen it happen. We saw Musa go in motion a minute ago when they went into the Wildcat. This time, turns, gives to Jennings. Jennings bounces it to the outside and still on his feet. Terrell Jennings does a great job, but number 26, Niamani Harris, Niamani Harris just wouldn't give up on the play and finally pulled him down. Yeah, that's what you call want to, right? Tackling's all about do you want it or not. And again, I think number 31, Perry Wells as well, was, was in there as well. Looked like he was in a rodeo style or something like that, the way they got him down, tied him up. Well, you're right. Tackling, the way it's done today, is all about want to. You have to really want to do it. And we saw a nice play there. So here comes a big down now for the Rattlers. Third and nine. He goes inside to Jennings on the keeper. Jennings still on his feet. Jennings is going to take it down to the six-yard line. What a run by Terrell Jennings. And we saw helmets flying off and a lot of stuff going on on that play. Watch these offensive linemen pulling, and they just create a huge lane for him. And, again, good job by the running back just following right up in there. And there he goes again. They came right back to Jennings again, and he pushed it down to the one-yard line. So the Rattlers from Florida A&M are one yard away from tying this ball game at 14 apiece. Jennings moves to, moves to the left. Musa turns, gives it to Jennings, slips the tackler, but he can't get in. Jacob Williams slowed him up just enough in the backfield so he could get some help from his friends, but he did not get it in. You know, I talk about this a lot as far as May, uh, as tackling, it starts with one, two, right? You got to want want to get it done, and tackling is at such a premium because you got guys spread out. But but even if you slow down the back at the point of attack, or you disrupt, you're creating and letting your teammates get to the ball. And we do have an injured rattler in the end zone. I didn't want to interrupt you there. You get back to your thought, but I want to let everybody know there is an injured player down on the field, and we'll see if we can find out who that is. If we can take a look. Looks like it's Kobe Gross. Kobe Gross, the big H-back. Shaking up a little bit, but that's a good sign right there as he bounces up. Going to be helped off the field a little bit. Kobe Gross, the transfer from Florida State. 6'2", 245 there, 243. And he's mostly under his own power there. That's that's really good news, no limp. Hopefully he'll be... uh, cleared and okay to return but but for the rattlers right here you know what's what's and both teams do it but i think the rattlers do it incredibly fast when they get success and they have you on the heels they line up for that next play i mean there are still tigers trying to line up or get across the line of scrimmage and they're coming at you and you better be ready and when they got you sweating and trying on your heels they're just going to keep pounding you and attacking you until they get get where they want to go that football is just inside the two so call it Third and goal and a long one, and the pitch out goes to Yant, 
Breaks the tackle and yet bounces into the end zone. Let's see where they mark him. He's taking our officials. They marked him down short. Wow. They said he's down. Let's take another look at the great effort by Yant. Boy, good effort going. I'm surprised that ooh, that must be right at the at the goal line. Yeah, Viramontes Pippins with a big hit, and then he got some help from Jacory Benjamin. And now on fourth down, here come the Rattlers. That is Moose on the quarterback sneak, and they get the tush push, and he's in for the touchdown. But there is a flag, and it will go against Florida A&M. Offense number 69. Your that what time they tried to go fast they tried to go fast you talk about it that time yep. and it backfired because they didn't get set the call was illegal procedure a yeah, big tj lee right there the same right, move and i don't know what they're arguing about now well, it's tough to see here but i mean the Rattlers are raising their hand like it's a touchdown. Well, they're, they're having a conversation with the referees, but I mean, either you see the legal procedure or you don't see it. I don't know how you unsee well, it. He, he threw the flag right away. It was the official on the far side of the field, and the flag came yep. down immediately. And so this is going to be very interesting because if you're right, if you see legal procedure, and they did go quickly, but let's see. Look, here comes Tony Ross. I have a Prior to the play, the officials stopped the play. This play will be replay over. Fourth down. However, what? I'm sorry, I missed that. Well, he said that the official didn't spot the ball, and now they're going to have to play fourth down over again. It's fourth and goal from the one. Wow. It's a I thought it was interesting because Musa and company. He's, he's explaining that to Coach Will, Willie yeah. Simmons. He's got look a lot at him, he says, what are you talking about? How is it not how is it not set? Yeah, he's he's uh, fired up over there. Regardless, we've got a call. I'm not sure how they came to it, but at the end of the day, it's fourth and one. Will yeah. the Tigers roar or will the Rattlers just go right back to it? Well, they had a lot of success last time with Musa just straight ahead, and here he comes again. Moose is a big quarterback, and there goes the push for the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Rattlers. The tush push works again. <laughs> Jalen Hurts you, would be proud if he was back watching this game. Uh, let me tell you what. That was a third and fourth effort to get in the end zone there. The Tigers at the point of attack really held them the first couple of, of, of tries. Watch, watch how hard he had to work. Right there he tries once, twice stood up. But the third time, right about here, is when it's the momentum carries them into the end zone. Uh, great effort by both teams there to, in that play. That's just amazing intensity. And we do have an injured Tiger on the field. That looks like Quentin Cook, in 92, excuse me. And he's being attended to. That's Gabe Smith down on the field as they check him out. And a lot of that second effort on the touchdown, though, I, and I, it'll be interesting to see what they do at the NFL level, what they do at the college level with that pushing into the end zone. Because it's almost unstoppable. You had a play like that. You end up getting two big offensive linemen behind you. They're right. just going to pick you up and throw you in the end zone. I mean, and that's that's kind of what happened there. Yeah, I'm, I'm no scientist, <laughs> but, but it's just a, it's a simple mass. <laughs> you know, and I, and I think that, you know, the other part of that, you, you know, uh, again, NFL talks a lot about uh, safety of players. That's a pretty unsafe play with that much poundage of people coming at. Because uh, you, defensively, you can only stack so much, right? So it, you, just from a lopsided standpoint, you always have more beef on the offensive side coming at you. And in the defense, the only thing they have in their, in their back pocket truly is leverage. They're still checking out Gabe Smith. He's down in the end zone. And he's set up for a second there. But, hey, what a job by the Rattlers from Florida A&M. They took the football to start the second half, and they took it all the way down for the touchdown. Let's look at our GM keys presented by GM, and we'll see what you thought the Florida A&M Rattlers had to do and whether or not you feel like they've done it so far. Well, I mean, play the potential. I don't think that they feel they have for sure. Uh, controlled confidence, pay attention to detail. In the first half, they didn't get it till the very end, pay attention to detail. Offensive decision-making, Musa has made good decisions. He's had just a couple of issues with some accuracy at times, some key moments when they did 
get guys open. So uh, at the end of the day, I think their biggest thing is controlled confidence. They came in here, you know, pretty confident they could go do- dominate this game. And then when it came to it, they didn't dominate at the beginning. And Gabe Smith was helped off the field, and he was limping pretty badly there. So we'll have to see if we can find out what the word is on him. He's a 6'3", 230-pounder from Austin, Texas, as the Rattlers attempt the extra point. And it is good. They split to the uprights, and we have a tie ball game. It's 14-14. Let's take a timeout. We'll be right back. Through the fall in hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School. We're powered by purpose. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. When you join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. The Rattlers from Florida A&M are starting to flex their muscles a little bit now. We're tied at 14 apiece. Let's check out that last scoring drive. 13 plays, 65 yards, and it took 6 minutes and 33 seconds before Jeremy Musa on the quarterback sneak took it in from one yard out to tie this game at 14 apiece. So how important was that for Florida A&M to get the opening kickoff of the second half and take it all the way down and score a touchdown? Yeah, and it was just a good, complete drive. A little bit of everything thrown in there, and again, the execution level was was high, and let's see if that that type of thing rolls off uh, to that Vaughn defense of theirs, and they can uh, they can uh, you know get things rolling there. And there's Kevin Granger, the VP of Athletics over at Texas Southern University. Just got a brand new contract extension. Smile, Kevin. That's a good reason to smile. I'm sitting a little more comfortable up there, right? <laughs> <laughs> new contracts are always good. Yeah, Kevin doing a great job over there at Texas Southern University. And, of course, uh, he'd like to see that lead be a little bigger instead of being a 14-14 game. You know, he'd yeah. like to see his team out in front. But they have the football now. So the Tigers behind Jace Wilson, who's back in at quarterback, will have their first possession here in the second half. They put Johnson in motion. Wilson's going to throw it. Has a guy all open. That is Johnson. He had to go down to make the catch. Johnson thinks he has it. The official said, no, you did. Wow. And Wilson missed it. Man, that is, I think he did a good job of, it did touch the ground at, at, at a point, but man, that, that was a great job of, of, of getting his hands underneath that ball. I, you know, back in the day, that probably would have been a catch. Nowadays, oh, Wilson's got to get something on that ball though, because he was open there. This time, he tries to go to Owens, and Owens has some room. Owens shaking and baking, and he got it back near the original line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Well, you know, the tough part about that previous play is Wilson did a great job of buying time, and he was relaxed in the pocket, and maybe he was just too relaxed, and he just threw that ball just short. 
Well, the, the, the Tigers tonight, and they, they would be the first one to tell you, Coach McKinney and company, you, it's all about execution. Mm -hmm. And that time he was all by himself, and he just didn't get the ball to him. So now you're looking at a third down and long because of that misfire. Third and nine. And that's a pass high, and up was Quay Davis, but he did not come down with the football. That time you saw Wilson put some zip on it that time. Yeah, he said, I'm not leaving it short this time, and I thought Davis had a crack at it, really. I just maybe just a mistimed jump is what it looked like to me, but that that I, I bet you Davis will tell you I should have caught that ball and from his his body language there he's like, Yeah, that that I should have been able to grab that one. So now the Tigers with some opportunities could not convert. So they will punt the football back to Florida AM. Patrick Helen on to kick it away. Jamari A. Sharid on the other side to return the kick. It's a high floating kick and a fair catch is called for and made. So we have a 14-14 game here at Shell Energy Stadium. We're going to pause for a time. NFL football, Little Caesars in my lucky chair. I'm not changing anything. Morning, girl. Morning, trash. Yeah. Good night, hon. Good night. Then over here with the growth premium market. Yeah, questions? George Kittle, what keeps you going all season long? Little Caesars Pizza, and of course my guy Daryl in his lucky chair. Yes! Do you hear that, Susan? That's because of the chair. Daryl gets it. He knows the four-quarter calzone from Little Caesars is officially delicious. Pizza, pizza. Hey, look at you. Floors by day, student by night. Student by day, baker by night. PT by dawn, dean's list by dusk. Crushing classwork online during the morning rush. Always powered by Penn State World Campus. Since 1998, we've led the charge in online education, offering access to more than 175 in-demand programs taught by our expert faculty. Penn State World Campus delivers on your time. Has this ever happened to you? How was school? Fine, whatever. Oh, no, not again. Eliminate that frustrating failure to communicate with Smell and Tell. One smell makes kids tell all the issues they face, like bullying, inclusion, mental health, and so much more. Mom, I need to talk to you. Smell and Tell requires absolutely no effort. Guys, <laughs> this can't be real. It's definitely unbelievable. Stop struggling and start communicating. Call now. Whoa, whoa, cut, stop. Listen, there is no quick fix to connect with kids about the challenging issues they face. But real help and guidance is available. Start at ChooseKindnessProject.com for ways to talk about inclusion and mental wellness. The TSU fans hoping to get a little spice coming up here from their defense. Florida a and with their second possession of the second half. And Musa starts it off with the pass to Sharid. And Sharid's going to pick up the first down. And the Rattlers will move the sticks right away. And this drive, that's exactly the way they started off the last drive. I'll tell you, man, Sharid is a, I can do everything, I can do it all. Uh, he is just electric, and they use him everywhere. We have another injury down on the field for the TSU Tigers, and that is 43. Canary Simmons, who's played himself a wheel of a ball game here tonight, and he's shaken up and escorted over to the sideline. It may have been an, stung his shoulder or something. Looked like he's trying to loosen up that shoulder. And as you can see, some of the stats from tonight, Florida A&M, 110 rushing, 137 passing, 102 for TSU rushing, 94 passing. And that 94 could have been more for TSU. They've, they've missed a couple. So the Rattlers with the football now. First and 10 for Jeremy Musa and the offense. Musa again. Nice touch down the sideline. There was some contact. No foul call, though. He was trying to hit Gassett again as he went streaking down the sidelines. Good coverage over there by Ja'Cory Benjamin. Yeah, the sidelines over there, the Rattlers wanted some kind of uh, interference at all. That ball was not even even close. I think maybe if that ball was closer, they may have done something, but that ball was 
six, seven yards. Just inaccurate right there. Moosa, the preseason offensive player of the year in the SWAC. He's passed for over 1,500 yards. Leads the conference in passing yards. I mean, he's done it all. His coach says he has all the physical tools, and we haven't seen all of that tonight. We've seen a little bit of it. This time he passes to his running back, still on his feet. A nice job by Kelvin Dean, Jr., and he's going to pick up about six yards. Dean, excuse me, go ahead. I was going to say there's a little bit of a different wrinkle right there, getting it to Dean out there, getting him in some room. I think it was real close to exploding and getting something bigger right there. They have a three-headed backfield do the Rattlers, and we've seen all three guys at different times tonight. They each bring something special to the backfield. Big third down now for Florida A&M. Third and six. They go to the run, and it's Dean who breaks it. Dean, over the 20, the 10, and he's in for the touchdown. Kelvin Dean Jr. breaks it for the Rattlers. I tell you, when they strike, they strike fast and hard. Yeah, Dean, I'll I tell you what, I, we said every one of those running backs brings something different to the backfield. Well, we saw what Dean brought right there. But again, look at that. They have a little trap misdirection right there, and he just comes, what timing, right? He comes right in between those blocks. It's separated a bit. He just, just turned on the juice and just kept going. Once he made the one cut, that was it. And for the first time tonight, the Rattlers from Florida A&M have the lead in this football game. On to attempt the extra point is Cameron Gillis. And his kick is good. And just like that, the Rattlers are out in front, 21-14. to Musa and his company have come on strong here in the second half. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Huge play coming up. Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. (laughs) Tostitos Hardy Dippers. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Every year, Thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. HBCUs are anchored by legacy. They nurture the talent and determination of their students and prepare them for a bright future. The Home Depot's Retool Your School program has and still believes in the excellence of HBCUs. Committed not just in speech, but through the revitalization and upgrades of the campuses these students call home. Building, planting, tilling the dream, all hearts and countless volunteers on the ground. Retool Your School. We're powered by purpose. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. Mm. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Welcome back, everyone. That last touchdown run by Kelvin Dean, it went for 49 yards. The drive, it was a quick one, folks. Four plays, 66 yards, and a minute and 42 seconds before Kelvin Dean took off 49 yards to score that touchdown for the Rattlers. And the Tigers are getting set to return it. That is Owens in his end zone, three yards deep. The Darius Owens comes back, and he's dropped at about the 20-yard line. 
That is where they will go on offense, first and ten at that point. Yeah, anything you would do to get Owens the ball at any time, anywhere, uh, that's why you get him the ball there. And I'll tell you what, he, he probably, when he goes back to look at that, he's going to say, man, I was a couple steps out of making something special out of that. So we will get another look at Jace Wilson and the TSU offense. Jace, who's actually a coach's son, so he understands everything about the game, and that's always a good thing, came into this game with right at 700 yards passing. He's over that now since taking over for Andrew Body when Andrew Body went out with the red shirt. So they're going to go back and start with Owens, and the Florida a and Rattlers are in the backfield, and they come up with a big stop. That is number 99, James Ash. Dropped him for a loss, call it a loss of two yards in the backfield. And I think what the Tigers have to do here, I mean, look, you've had success all game long. Go go to go to what works, right? I mean, and that offensive line has still got to dominate. You're letting the, the Rattlers start to get more aggressive on the defensive line. Second and 12, Wilson, and there was a miscommunication there. He was trying to hit Jaron Johnson, but Johnson came across the middle. He thought he was breaking to the outside. That was just a miscommunication on that one. And, again, I, I think right here for the Tigers, you, you can't let them get you out of your game. It's it's, it's 21-14. Yeah. I mean, you, this game is super tight. You played a really good football game here. Yes, the Rattlers have come out in the second half, look really good. Your offenses look good all the way up to this. Just get back to what works. So Jace Wilson on third down, steps up in the pocket, has some room, trying to work out of it. He can't get to the sticks. And Wilson's going to be stopped about five yards shy of that first down. Yeah, I mean, I think he did a good job of just, just taking it down and running. And again, that little spin, they must work on this at TSU because all of them are spinning today. But that spin wasn't going to get him the extra four yards or so he's going to need for that uh, first down. So uh, fourth and four, they'll punt again. And, and what's tough about this, Butch, is that it puts that defense right back on the field again, and they don't get a break to kind of recover, go through some adjustments, and get ready. That defense is starting to stay a, a lot on the field, a lot of plays in the second half early. So Jamari Gassett back to return the punt this time for Shereed, and it's going to hit, going to hit short and take a Texas Southern bounce as it goes inside the 30. It's going to be touchdown at about the 28-yard line. 27 yard line so that is where the Tigers yeah the Rattlers now what are they going to do with their offense I mean they've been very successful yeah. this second half you know uh, again you stick with the game plan right I mean at the end of the day whatever they talked about and like you said uh, you know uh, Coach Willie Simmons is not quiet in the locker room at halftime uh, uh, sure he gave him some we'll just call it uh, intense direction uh, and now he's going to keep that intensity because again it's a seven-point game. It's a play away from, from anything, from the Tigers coming right back. It feels like the air's been let out of the Tigers a bit. But, again, when you're in these kind of games, you've got to close the door. You can't let teams in it. You can't let them stick in it and be a play away. You're a turnover away from getting back into this ball game. But two straight three and outs for the Tigers to start the second half. It's Jamari Asha Reed on the reverse. And he rips off a big run. Call it a gain of 19 for Jamari A. Shereed, and they've run him on that reverse a few times tonight. Right, and the great thing is they just keep, again, you know, Coach talked about they run the same run plays, and it's different reads wherever they want to go with it. You run that play one, this time you give it to the reverse. It was run really, really well. They go right back up the middle, and they're just coming out, and they're handing the ball to the big backs, and they're letting them letting them eat. Yeah, I mean, let them fly. That was, uh, what? Uh, Terrell Jennings on the carry there. And, again, it looks like, to me, the offensive line was challenged. I think they were challenged at halftime and said, look, you got to get in there and get them. And, and what wakes up an offensive line is running direct, running at them, letting them pull, line up and blow some people up. They, they get the adrenaline going, and I think that's what we're seeing the results of. Second and four for the Rattlers. They run the jet sweep again. And another big play for the Rattlers. That was Kareem Burke on the carry. He's going to have almost 20 more on that carry. Kareem Burke is a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida, six-footer, 198 pounds. Coach Clarence McKinney talked about his defense needing to make some big plays for him. They got one big interception early in this game. Right now this defense has got to stand up 
and not just make a play. It's got to be something that gives them some momentum, gets the Tigers adrenaline going again. They've got to re-attack that energy they did at the beginning of this game. Another first down for the Rattlers. And Moose is going to throw this. Had some pressure. Stepped up in the pocket. Gets away. Moose is still on his feet. Spinning. And he's down inside the 20. He couldn't really decide, do I want to slide? Do I want to try to run out of bounds? And he just spun in and picked up three extra yards. Nice play by Moose. Yeah, no. And again, they were in some man coverage on the outside. And that's why the defensive backs were still running with receivers. And no one turned around to see Musa, And he just kind of, it's kind of interesting how he ran to a defender. But... Who am I to say? He probably had a few extra yards without getting hit there. They could have just. Uh... We do have one of the Rattlers down. That is Cardell Thomas, the transfer from LSU, and he's limping over to the sideline. So you mentioned how well that offensive line was doing here in the second half. That cannot be good news for the Rattlers. No, and again, I mean, I think the aggression level of that offensive line, when I say they were challenged, you know, I've seen it many times, been in a, several locker rooms where you come out of halftime and, and your head coach will walk over to the offensive line and say, look, how bad do you want it, right? Are you going to help lead this team? What are you going to do? And, and that, to me, is what, what it's looked like because the defensive line for the Tigers played really well the first half. And not that they're not fighting really hard right now, but they're having less success. And it looks like uh, that offensive line is just really dominating. Another first down for Florida A&M. This time he floats it over the middle, and he's a little too long. Little contact, but not enough for a flag. He was trying to hit Jeremiah Pruitt, the big tight end, in the back of the end zone. Well, Pruitt kind of stopped a little bit. Right there you see him, and then he has to try to put on the gas again. So I think he thought it was going to be shorter, and I think that just kind of put him where he didn't have a, he didn't have a chance at it. And what it looked like to me, he was trying to get the defensive back on his back. And that's why he slowed down for a minute, but the pass was just too long. So Jennings in the backfield for the Rattlers. And there goes a lot of that motion back from side to side. Musa will throw it complete to the freshman. Breaks the tackle, still on his feet, and he spins into the end zone. Kareem Burke on the touchdown for the Rattlers. He showed off some speed right there. You know, we talked about execution really from the beginning of this game, that it was going to be a big key for Ford A&M to keep their focus, pay attention to detail. Watch this. Look at the guys coming out, the linemen coming through second and third level blocks to create that. And the timing of them getting there on the defenders as your running backs going through was just special. Well, that's what Coach Willie Simmons told us this week. Sometimes... My team has to get hit in the mouth before they realize they're in a fight. Yeah. And that looks like what happened tonight. And he said, well, fellas, y'all got hit in the jaw in the first half. Let me see what you got in the second half. And the extra point attempt is good. And they've just doubled that lead real quick. And how about that? The big play chain right there for Kareem Burke as we take another look. And again, and just watch the linemen out front timing. And again, you don't have to. I think the thing that's interesting, right, in today's game when you're wide, you don't have to lay someone out as a lineman, right? You're really a big body that can just get in the way, create lanes, moving down the field. And that's what they did. You had guards pulling from the backside, going ahead in front of that block that just made made a great job getting to the end zone. Kareem Burke, the young freshman with a 17-yard TD pass from Musa. The drive, 72 yards and six plays and it took them two minutes and 33 seconds to get that one in the end zone. And you see a couple of Florida A&M faithful in the stands tonight. Made the trip all the way to Houston, Texas. Well, they're liking it now. I don't know how much they were uh, enjoying it earlier, but right now they're liking it. But And again, because the Rattlers answered in the second half, right? Made adjustments, and I really just think it's more about intensity. I don't think they've changed their game plan at all. Tigers have to answer now. You've talked about getting punched in your mouth. What do you do when you get punched in your mouth? You fold, whatever. Right? The Tigers just got to answer, and their offense has to get a drive going regardless. Points or no points right now, they need a drive that gets them a few first downs down the field and kind of change the intensity. Trenton Leary back to return the kick for the Tigers. Instead, it's going to be Ladarius Owens. He starts to the outside, has some room over the 20. Goes and tries to Hurdle the defensive back, and he is upended there. A big stick. Boy, that's why they tell you to stay on your feet. 
Wow, that was a hurdle with a hurdle moving. Watch him right here. I'm going to jump over you. Not so fast, my friend. Ow! <laughs> Woo! Yeah, you saw Owens trying to make a big play happen for just a minute. It looked like he might get around yeah. the outside, but nothing doing there. That was Eric Smith doing a great job getting over there and making the hit. Yeah, it sure was. And again, tackles don't have to be pretty. They just got to be made. Jace Wilson in the offense now for TSU. Three receivers out wide to his right. He's going to pass it. Throws underneath, has his man, and ball is out. But it's picked <laughs> off. What a great play by the Tigers. Quay Davis caught the fumble in midair and then dove forward. So Quay Davis saved the day for the Tigers after it was fumbled by Leary. Yeah, that is not a design play of the, of the hook and ladder, but it wound up with the same result. Play good for three yards. Second and six. Pressure. It's Gentle Hunt. The big Gentle Bear with a sack right in Jace Wilson's face. Big number 92. All 300 pounds of it. Woo, he did that little dance move of carry the big hammer and slamming it down right there. Yeah, he gets the catch right here. and Take a look at that. It comes popping out. And nice job there. <laughs> Getting it and uh, taking it up the field. Yeah, and before that, you had a big sack after that by General Hunt. So Texas Southern, third and a wow. You know, they got third and maybe the pair land and a big stick. Boy, I tell you what, the Florida A&M Rattlers have come alive all of a sudden on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Deco Wilson there, or Deco Wilson, excuse me, with a big, big hit there. And again, the intensity level for the Rattlers, you can just tell. They've just got a lot more intensity right now. That will take us to the end of the third quarter with the Rattlers out in front, 28-14. And they're doing it in a big way with some big hits.
Welcome back to Houston, Texas, Shell Energy Stadium. Take a look at the quarterbacks here, Jeremy Musa and Jace Wilson. Jace Wilson looked hot at the beginning, was tearing it up, 104 yards, looked really good, successful, the offense moving. And then Jerry Musa turned it on right before the half. And right now, 167 yards passing, two touchdowns, that one interception. But right now, the momentum's all on the Rattler side with Musa. Ken Wilson and the Tigers answer now with their offense. It's all, it, it's all about game script. And in the first half, the script was working in TSU's way. They were getting the ball back. They were having success. It was promoting the run. They were promoting the pass. They were doing a lot of good things out there. And in the second half, everything is flipped the other way, and it's the team in the white jerseys who are doing a heck of a job now as the Tigers get set to punt the football away. Pressure on the kick. It goes straight up. It's going to be short. It hits, but it takes a great Texas Southern bounce as it bounces inside the 25-yard line. So it worked out great for Helen. That <laughs> wound up being a, a fantastic punt. You didn't have to worry about a return. But, again, great pressure from the Rattlers there. He had to get that off quickly, and that's why it went straight up. It did. So we will see right now what's going on with Florida a and because they have had no problems moving the ball here in the second half as we get set to start the fourth quarter. And basically, like you said, it's just been line up and let's run the football. And Musa had that long pass right before the half, but he hadn't had a big hit since. And he hadn't needed to have it. No, and again, when you can dominate the line of scrimmage, that's, that's what any coach looks for. It makes it real simple. Right? And the Tigers have to answer and, and, and attack the point of attack where they were the first half. Florida A&M goes to the power set. Give it to Yant, and he runs over Jacob Williams. He's going to pick up about five or six yards on that carry, just going straight ahead behind their power lineup. But I respect the heck out of Williams right there. He basically sacrificed his body right there to slow him down because he had a whale of momentum right there. And he just jumped in in front of the truck, right, and said, yeah. I'm going to go down with the ship. Well, he took one for the team. Jacob Williams is an undersized linebacker, only about 210. But, man, he can bring it, and he's one of the exceptional players in this league. I mean, he shows it week in and week out. We talked about his 13 tackles last week and his 95-yard touchdown return last week. I mean, this guy can play. So the Rattlers go back to the run again, and it's yet, and this time, only a yard on the carry. Yeah, so this will bring up a big third and one. Again, are you going to see that, uh, as we talked about earlier, the, the old push-push here to get him across? It's very close. It looks on the field. It looks like it's less than a less than a yard for the first down. He's very very close. And that big offensive line, right? I agree with what you were saying earlier. When it looked like they weren't having a lot of success in the first half, they've come out in the second half and really been aggressive to make it happen. So on third down, he's hit the backfield, tried to spin away and dive for the sticks. I think he still came up short. But what a great stop by Biramontes Pippins. And to try to keep him shy of that first down, and they did. It's going to be fourth and one. But you can look at the Rattlers' offense, and they're not going anywhere. Jacob Williams also helping out on that play. Yeah, I was going to say, he came just absolutely flying in there, which made running back have to make the adjustment. So fourth down and a yard to go for Florida a and They go to Yant, the big back, and he gets it easily. Goes off tackle, picks up about five. That is a first down for the Rattlers with 12.43 to go in this ballgame. I'll tell you what, that's a confidence call on a fourth and one, but if you don't get that, right? And, again, it's always the if you get it, it's great. If you don't, you put the Tigers in great, great position right there. But, again, that's faith in your offense and saying, you know what, we're, we're going to go get this. And, and Coach Willie Simmons will say, uh, you know what, good call. <laughs> so the Rattlers have another first and ten behind Jeremy Musa, and he pitches to Yant. Ball is loose. Yant recovers it, but boy, that ball was just hanging out there for the Tigers to pick it off, and they just couldn't get there in time. So that was almost a big mistake right Watch there by the Rattlers. Watch this play. You got Lyman pulling to the left, but then you pitch to the right. So when you're a defensive lineman in interior, you've got keys. You follow, right? You're supposed to follow the guys pulling because that's where the ball is going to go. And so you take off and clear some room, but the linebackers did a great job scraping and getting in the inside there. Well, Jacob Williams was in the backfield so quick, it made Gant take his eyes off the ball, and he looked up at Williams. 
because that's when he had to cut back when Williams showed in the backfield. Yep. So once again, Jacob Williams making a huge play for the Tigers. So second down after the loss, call it a loss of six, maybe seven yards on the play. Musa looking deep, still looking downfield, throws it, and it's almost intercepted by the Tigers. Good defensive play by TSU. Yeah, Sharid wound up being the defender right there, <laughs> trying to keep the uh, defender from getting, <laughs> getting the ball and getting the interception, and they wanted offensive interference there. Uh, wasn't going to get that call. That Perry, Perry Wells. Wells on yeah, the play. yeah he, he wanted offensive interference there, but uh, they were going to give it to him. But good job by Sharid realizing I can't catch it. I'm not going to let you catch it either. So now we got third and, and, a, and a little bit to go, a little bit of real estate to go for the Rattlers. Sharid goes in motion. Now he sets. Gas it on the other side. A strike from Musa and Sharid had his hands on it. Could not squeeze it. He'd been, he would have been close to the first down. Don't know if he would have had it. But that's going to go out down as an incomplete pass, and they will have to punt the football away. Again, he put it right there. Sharid, I'm sure he's upset with himself by not catching that. What a big stop by the Tigers' defense. All right, they needed a stop here. You couldn't let the Rattlers just keep rolling here. Big stop. They're looking for a return, some type of momentum, get that offense out there and get back in this thing. So Trey Will Hoyt will point it away, and Trenton Leary goes back to return for Texas Southern. Good punt, sails deep, back to around the 15-yard line. Here comes Leary on the return, breaks the tackle, still on his feet, trying to get out of that maze, and Leary will be dropped near the 25-yard line, and there is a late flag down. So the official tossed the flag down right at the end of that run. And They'll be tacking on 15 yeah. there, Butch. It was looked like a late hit variety there. Yeah, that, that, it sure was. Again, that play was blown dead. And you had a Rattler come flying in on the end the top of the pile. Doing the return. Illegal block in the back. Return team number 13. The 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First it, down. A block in the back is called against the return team, but that was a mighty late flag for that because <laughs> that came after he was on the ground. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. join the HBCU family, you become part of the tradition of breaking barriers in your community, breaking ground in your career, and bringing it with everything you do. From how you look to how you move in the classroom, on the court, and on the field. That's why Academy Sports and Outdoors is proud to celebrate the HBCU legacy and all those to add to it in their own way. We are exactly what you think. We are not at all what you think. We are past, present, and future. All in one. Because the best way to honor our history is to make history. General Motors, honored to sponsor the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Doritos created Solid Black in 2021 to help fuel the initiatives of black leaders seeking to drive real change. And this year, Doritos Solid Black is welcoming 16 new change makers to the program. We are Solid Black. Huge play coming up. Talking about dropping the ball. I got the score. To Steven's Hardy Dippers. In 1920, an athletic league was formed and slowly became one of the leading sports associations in the world of collegiate athletics, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Today, the SWAC is looking towards the next century, growing, supporting, and transforming our intercollegiate sports activities for student athletes and promoting academic excellence. Each SWAC member institution represents a high level of integrity and sportsmanship. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. Welcome back, everyone. The 19th-ranked Florida A&M Rattlers out in front, 
We're in the fourth quarter here in Houston with Texas Southern with the football trying to mount a comeback in this one. Handoff goes to Ladarius Owens, and he goes straight ahead. It's going to pick up about four yards, and he's had himself a fine game tonight for the Tigers. Yeah, and I think he's someone you, you, you certainly got to, just like we talked about challenging the Rattlers uh, offensive line, I think the same thing has to be said for the Tigers. He had great success. Owens was going off for over 100 yards first half. You need to put it on his back and say, let's go. Second down and about five. Pass from Wilson to Johnson was a little bit behind him, and Johnson could not hang on. That's tough. He, yeah. He usually catches those. And, again, those are, those are you know, we, we talk about execution, right? And, again, that wasn't the perfect pass, but you have to make plays for your quarterback, and your quarterback has to make plays for you. It's a combination. Again, big third down right here. Tigers need five to keep this drive alive. Wilson has some time. Oh, and the great defensive play by the Rattlers. That was Eric Smith jumping the route, and if that ball had been on target, he might have been going the other way with it. Yeah, you know, that's true. I thought almost right there you were going to see Ladarius Owens get a ball and run. If he could get within a yard of the first down, they would use it four, four, four downs to get the first down. Uh, when they when they threw it, you know, it just, it's all or nothing right there. Yeah, You're but right. what, it what, could have gone the other way. What's going on in this defense, it, this game, is is it's quite simple when you look at it. Florida A and M came in this game with the best defense in the SWAC. They didn't really play like it in the first half. They have played like it here in the second half, and that's been the biggest difference in this game. So a punt is back to Sharid. He can't handle it. It's loose. It's still loose. We'll see how when they unstack, where is that football? Who came up with it? That would be a huge break for the Tigers if they came up with that football. They think they have it. But what does Tony Ross think? Now we have a flag while they're trying to unstack. And so the ruling is that the receiving team did make the recovery. Not sure if it was Cherie, but maybe one of his buddies did. I think I saw a number one in there. So they'll maintain possession. The flag had something to do with the unstacking at the end. Yeah, I believe so. Probably of the unsportsmanlike variety, would you say? This Mr. Tony Ross, our referee. Unsportsmanlike kind of against the kicking team, number 15. It's been a 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the TSU Tigers. As you see, Shereed couldn't hang on to it. We'll be back in a minute.
football on ESPN is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods and outdoor retailer of the SWAC. Home Depot, proud sponsor of the SWAC, and by Nike. Ten oh two to go left in the ball game and Florida AM with the football and the lead 28-14. As the Tigers have come out, excuse me, as the Rattlers have come out and look like a different team here in the second half. Here they go shifting in motion again. Musa with that strong left look right there, and he's gonna pass it. He's looking the other way. Floats it out there and it's gonna be incomplete, but trying to get it over to Sharid. And he led him out to the sidelines. Sheree trying to give him enough room to work. Pass just overthrown. You know what? I, I, Coach Wilson was talking about the fact that they call a lot more run plays than they do pass plays. Uh, and then Musa has the the option to do certain things with them. And what I noticed, there's a ton of misdirection linemen. Linemen pulling going one way and the pass or the play goes another way, whether it's a quick pitch or a pass. And right there, it was the entire line going left like a big pull sweep. A power sweep, and then you had the pass going the opposite way. They'll give you a lot of looks. They will definitely give you a lot of looks. No doubt about that. So they put Sharid in motion. They give him the football. He tries to turn the corner. He does. Still on his feet. Tiptoes near the sidelines, and he's out of bounds after a gain of about 18 yards and a first down on that. And, you know, you were talking earlier, Jorge, about the maturity level of this team as we watch Jamari A. Sharid on the end around. They are very mature, mature group. Coach told us this week they have 24 guys that have already graduated and have their degrees, and that and that's and we're seeing some of that maturity out on the field tonight by not seeing any panic in them when they were down 14 nothing in this yeah, game. It, it bleeds over to your young players. Obviously, you've got the players that are older, more mature, have been through a lot more things, but it bleeds over to your younger guys because they'll buy in. So here comes the pitch in the backfield. And it goes to Dean, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds after a short run. And and uh, just to, to pick up more along of what you're talking about there, you know, they have three guys on this team that are married. You know, they got uh, five guys on this team that have kids and are participating fathers and, and doing everything they can to be a part of their lives. And he said sometimes practice is organized around who has to bring their kids to practice. Right. And, again, I, I have a lot of respect for him understanding that hey i want to make sure my my young men can take care or accommodate their kids or their family or their situation that means a lot to a family you know everyone talks about a, a team being a family he's creating that truly there so musa with the pass to burke and it's loose and it's going to be let's see he's going to complete a pass and a fumble but burke gets back on it for the offensive team that play happened so fast i didn't know if they were going to say it was a completion right because it barely touches his hands, and then it's out. So either way, though, good defensive play by the Tigers. Now another big third down. Can they get the stop? Yeah, that looked like it might have been an incomplete pass. As you see it right there, it's, yeah. that's very close, but it goes down. So now it's going to be a big third down and about seven yards to keep the drive going. But we're going to have a timeout on the field. I don't know if they're calling a timeout to give them a chance to look I'm at that. the discussion, the root of previous play is an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass, yeah. they just called it now. So I think that's the right call. Well, it was bang, bang. But, uh, you know, uh, on first look, it did look like he didn't really have the football. Like right. you said, I, either way, it didn't matter because they did recover the football. So right. there was not going to be a change of possession there. Well, it's interesting. They just uh, changed the play, and then they kind of let everyone kind of break and regroup here. And I don't think that was the extent of the, of the referees. They got to put this ball in play and let it go go back to the original line of scrimmage right there and again it's it's going to be what third and nine or third and ten push now florida a m has really dominated this time of possession here in the second half texas southern has had too many three and outs uh to maintain any momentum so now here comes a third and long third and ten that's called it and now the officials will talk about this again because they did not have the ball spotted right they actually gained three on the run earlier, so now they got it right. Yeah, it was and now it's going to be third and seven instead of third and ten. So Tony Ross is right there keeping everybody straight. Now 
Musa will see if he can convert and keep the ball going. We haven't seen big number 81 tonight. A bunch. Kamari Young, but he's been a force on this offense. And Musa's going to give it this time to Dean. Dean bounces off a tackle, and Dean has the first down for the Rattlers. How about that run by Kelvin Dean Jr.? And I'll tell you, he had that big backbreaker earlier, the big 49-yard run, and right there chops off another, what, eight yards, I believe, on that one. Uh, he's a strong runner. And, again, that offensive line is really doing a good job of, of creating some creating some seams. Yeah, big 76, Cameron Colvin leading that play through the hole, doing a good job of just creating some space for the running backs here tonight. I don't know that I've seen an offensive line with big guys that move as well as they do. So the Rattlers go upstairs again. Musa with time. Fires a strike. It's high. That's an incomplete pass. You know, when Musa misses, he misses. I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, man, it sounds kind of silly, but I mean, that, that's about the third or fourth time, maybe fifth, that he's gone way over the top of his receiver. And he had him open. Well, I was watching that ball spinning right there on the replay, and it reminded me of something Coach Simmons says. He said, this guy's got great arm talent. And that's what you saw right there. That yeah. is great arm talent. I mean, he can flip that thing in there in a second. I mean, it, it's a frozen rope, and you can tell by the rotation. So he's got all the, the skills, all the measurables you look for in a quarterback. And they give it to Dean again around the left side. Dean's going to pick up about five or six yards before he's rode out of bounds, written out of bounds. Number two over there helping out on the tackle. The Tigers have to find a way to get some adrenaline right now, right? I mean, now you're looking at the the, the, the score and the time, and right now you got some guys with their hands on their hips, and you got some guys looking at scoreboards and stuff. They have got to find a way to get that spark or intensity, whether it's make a big play. And I really truly believe right now that defensive lineman and linebackers they've got to get in that backfield and create something. Right. That now. was Isaiah Bogarty on the last tackle, so that sets up a third. Call it third and five for the Rattlers, and they go to Burke. Burke has some room. News, good move by Burke. A little shake and bake, and he has the first down before he is pulled down on the 25-yard line. But a nice move by the freshman. Nice catch and run. And you know what? The receivers are always known to want to catch the ball, right? Watch Kamari Young and the team over there. Look at them block right there. They are staying with blocks, giving him a chance to explode. Look at that. Young is still on him all the way past the whistle, blocking a receiver, right? You don't think coaches look at that kind of stuff and say, that's what I'm talking about because that's giving it up for your teammates, not for your own limelight. First and 10 now for Florida A&M. Musa again with a quick pass to Burke on the other side. And Burke tried to split the defense and almost did, but he's dragged down. And he got through that one tackle. It was gone. It was a good night, but a good tackle by the Tigers. Yeah, and again, look at the two receivers out front, right? Smaller guys, I got to get in front of them with quick feet and stay in front of them, and they both do that again. Tobias Williams on the stop for the Tigers. Got a hold of him and held on. Yeah, Tigers having to really rotate now. Some defensive linemen on through, starting to get tired. They've been on his field a lot Second, second half. Give is to Dean. Bounces off. Tries to get to the outside, but it's not happening this time. Brian Booker, one of the defensive players there. He had some other help, some more help from his friends as they stack that one up, and they're going to force another third down attempt. Be number 97. Quick Cook was out there as well. But again, I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot of thinking going on as far as what are they going to do. When they stack those receivers outside, they're going to throw it out there when that wide receiver screen. And if uh, uh, now, when I talked about misdirection, which will be really interesting because they've been running with the pulling linemen, creating the seams, it'll be interesting if you see a counter coming up here soon. Dean checks out, and Terrell Jennings is back in in the backfield. He's going to give it to Jennings, and Jennings has nowhere to go. Just a good reaction from that TSU defense. Keyshawn Spragans, one of the Tigers there to shut that run down. As the clock ticks down, we're about 4.35 to go in this ball game, And the Florida A&M Rattlers will send the kicking team out 
to attempt a field goal. That this will be Cameron Tigers. Gillis. Again, that defensive line stepped up and, again, get the big stop here. You're holding a field goal. Looks like it's going to be a 39-yard attempt, and we have a whistle before he could get it off. And he actually hit that. So, Who called that time? Some good practice there for Cameron Gillis. Sure was. <laughs> what, was that a Florida a or TSU trying to figure that out? We're going to go to a break and figure that out during this timeout. 28-14, the Rattlers from... <laughs> yes! Oh, I'm so excited. You got enough stuff in here to go camping for a week, right? We are not going camping for a week, are we? No, we're not going camping for a week. Okay. But I do know a shortcut. I don't know if we can make this. Don't you need an SUV for this? Watch this. I got you, and Kona got me. Okay, Hyundai. I told you. Do we really have to go hiking? Girl, hiking is good for you. All right, now. What if my coverage isn't right? What if I accidentally hit a food truck? What if it gets covered in empanadas? At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Thanks. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Hey, look at you. Floors by day, student by night. Student by day, baker by night. PT by dawn, Dean's List by dusk. Crushing classwork online during the morning rush. Always powered by Penn State World Campus. Since 1998, we've led the charge in online education, offering access to more than 175 in-demand programs taught by our expert faculty. Penn State World Campus delivers on your time. I avoided credit cards most of my life. But when I started to create a streaming platform for musicians like me, I knew it was important to build my credit to set my business up right. I heard about the Chime Credit Builder card and I signed up right away. I didn't have to worry about fees, interest, or credit checks. Within a month, my score went up. Now it's up over 100 points. I feel set up for success and so is my business. I tell everybody about the Chime Credit Builder card. Here we go. Check it out at Chime.com. The Subway Series menu is getting a new lineup of sandwiches. The Deli Heroes. There's fresh sliced turkey on the Titan Turkey. Fresh sliced ham on the Grand Slam ham. Five meats on the beef. And look at that double cheese. Try Subway's taste is refreshed yet. This month. Welcome back, everyone. 28-14, Florida A&M out in front, and they are attempting a field goal right here. It's from 30, 39 yards officially. Kick is on its way, and it is good. No doubt about that one from Cameron Gillis. That, that one would have been good from 44 easily as he got that one through with a lot of leg to spare. And the Rattlers extend their lead. It's now 31-14. After that field goal by Gillis. Whoop. Here sits the McDonald's hash brown. The side that makes every breakfast sandwich better. Let's all be more like the hash brown. Your favorite breakfast deal is now tastier with the sausage, egg, and cheese McGriddles. Mix and match two for four seventy nine. Bada ba ba ba. Are you ready to invest in yourself, your talent, your smarts, your skills? Get the returns you're banking on with a rewarding IT career that could start in months, not years, at My Computer Career. The high demand for IT and cybersecurity experts means your income could be safer in a more recession-resistant career. Already in IT? Why not skill up in cybersecurity and networking for open positions employers are desperate to fill? My Computer Career. The right training, the right timing, the right career. Bank on you at mycomputercareer.edu. Cover more ground in the Kia Sportage Turbo Hybrid. Kia, movement that inspires. For over six decades, Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Toyland has made wishes come true for everyone. Now through Wednesday, we're celebrating with great gifts at great prices throughout the store. Like this rechargeable LED work light, just $17.99. This Nerf 2.0 double punch blaster, only $29.99. And assorted Dots Homestyle Snacks, just $4.99 each. 
Plus, make your Blaine's Christmas wish list on the Farm and Fleet app for a chance to win up to $1,000. Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Toyland, where wishes come true for everyone. I created This Is Me Now, my first collection with Intimacy Me. It's American creativity meets Italian design with the passion to craft something truly unique. Intimacy Me, the art of Italian lingerie. After that last field goal, they now have a 31-14 lead, and they're getting set to kick off to the TSU Tigers. We have four minutes to go in this ball game. It's been all Rattlers here in the second half. Ladarius Owens feels that at about the three. Has a crease. Owens tries to get through, and we got nothing but laundry all over the field. There's like one, two, three, three flags all in the same vicinity were dropped on the field. Can't wait to see what Tony Ross has to say about that one. Whatever, Whatever it was, they all saw the same thing. <coughs> Doing the return. Holding the seed team, number two. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. And there's a call from Tony Ross. That last drive by the Rattlers, 12 plays, 42 yards, took them six minutes and two seconds off the clock. Took a lot of time off the clock before Cameron Gillis hit it officially from 39 yards to extend the lead to 31-14. Well, the Tigers now just need to, again, just run your plays, be crisp about it, move quick, and then See if you can get a score and move from there. TSU on offense now. Jace Wilson has gone all the way at quarterback. He's going to throw it. This man is wide open. That is Johnson, Jaron Johnson. And he's going to cross midfield. A huge gain right there by the Tigers. And that is the spark they've been missing here in the second half. Sure was. Again, that play action held the linebackers in, and then they created a big seam. So Wilson to toss it again. Now he's going to pull it down and run, and he's going to be smacked hard. Jace Wilson got it right out to the 40-yard line, and he was tattooed right there. Yeah, he paid the price for sure on that. Again, they're moving fast, lining up right now. Well, a quick touchdown, and he could make it interesting. Wilson again, and he's going to give it to Owens. Owens trying to push forward, but here come the Rattlers. Good defense there. Jordan Moore and company threw him way back into the backfield. Isaiah Major also on the play. Yeah, I mean, Owens can make a big play anytime. If he gets enough seam, they think they're going up top, and they let they, if he can get uh, those defenders on a passing lane rush, run right through him, he can make something big happen. He did get the first down. Chase Wilson tries to get out of the pocket, and he had to reach out and pull that football back. It was interesting. He almost lost it when he was taken down, but he got managed to get the handle on it. Tigers call a timeout here, trying to collect themselves. This will be a 30 Probably second Probably what you do here is line up the next two or three plays and say, guys, here's how we're going to handle this. Well, they've done a good job on this drive, and, and it's partly Florida AM and backing off a little bit, but also they executed and they made some plays. Let's check out our player of the game tonight. Tonight's player of the game presented by Gatorade. How about Jeremy Musa? The quarterback for Florida A&M, all he did, 17 to 32, 180 yards, including that 58-yard touchdown pass right there. Musa also had two TD passes, one TD run, got that one in on the little tush push there. What a night for Jeremy Musa! Three touchdowns in total, and he led the comeback. Yeah, and I think he'll tell you as good a game as it was. He's like, man, I left too much out there, right? So, uh, I mean, but but good job by him. And he is the heartbeat of that offense. 
So Jace Wilson gets out of the pocket, sends his receiver deep, fires it, has him, and it's dropped. Trenton Leary had nothing but the end zone in front of him, and he looked up and dropped the pass. Wow. You know, and, and that's how you actually coach what he did. I mean, he brought his hands out to the ball to catch it. He was just thinking touchdown before the catch. And, again, he listens to his court, right? Jace says, hey, go, go, go. I got you. Oh, that's right and there. Just, man, right in the wheelhouse, right between the one and the two. You know, he was already looking into the end zone, did not tuck that ball away, and that's a big miss by the Tigers. So now it presents a third down for TSU. But Trenton Leary has been a good receiver for them the last couple of weeks. And a handoff goes to Owens, still on his feet, breaking tackles. Owens is going to be near the first down, and he's going to be very close. I think he has it. First down by Owens. So the Tigers Owens. get the first down Leary. through the rushing game. Well, Owens is really fun to watch. I mean, he is electric. Look at his moves right there. He's always going forward, always decisive. And right here, he could have given up, but no, he just starts driving his legs, shows the power at the end of the play. A 5'9", 190-pound senior. We mentioned he's a newlywed. He's also a biology major. So Jace Wilson now looking to throw. Comes underneath to Quay Davis. And Davis is going to get what he could get before he's bumped out of bounds. So the Tigers trying to cash this one in. We're under two minutes to go in the game. Well, when you just reeled off that big play by Owens and then you ran that play action to him, right? That whole defense thought Owens had the ball for a while there because you saw Jace just stand there. He had plenty of time to look. First down. Unfortunately, there's a penalty on that play, and it uh, is all for naught. Penalty flag, and everyone is backing up a little bit. 58. It's not your lineman. They call your name. It's not really good. <laughs> going to stay first down, but it'll be first and long for Texas Southern. Chase Wilson shooting one for the end zone. Fires up there, has his man, and it's incomplete. Almost a nice catch over there. Now we have a late flag. Wow. Oh, following the play, a really late flag. And it comes from the center. He was trying to hit King Blanton over there before the flags came out. Yeah, and, and that the referee who called it was standing under the goal post while there was a referee right dead center in front of it. And they're going to discuss this call. And we'll see if they pick up the flag or not. Out the discussion. There's no foul on this play for pass interference. Well, it took a conference, but they came away with the no-call call. Well, he was early. He got there early. He sure did. That's that's a little strange. So, call it an incomplete pass. It's now second down for Texas Southern. I've seen the replay. I changed my mind. It wasn't fun. Yeah, no, he got there early. So, the give is to Owens again. Excuse me, too big. Ladarius, that was not Ladarius. That was Ja'Cory Howard. He's the big guy that will pound you. He's 6'1", 225-pound senior. And the clock continues to tick now. We're closing in on a minute to go in this ball game. Wilson to throw it again. Has a man all alone for the touchdown for Texas Southern University. Kirian Charlo was all by himself. And Wilson found him, and the Tigers are on the board with the touchdown. Good way to finish off the drive for Texas Southern. Tell you, Kossum, one of the one of the only times you saw confusion on the uh, Rattlers defense right there. Ran two receivers, crossed him, and then he wound up open. And again, Jace knew he was going to be open and threw it right to him. And this time, uh, you catch the ball, right? Don't worry about where you're going. Catch the ball. Make sure you have the catch. So you got first. one one fifteen to go. If he hits the extra point, you're ten down. So we're going to see an onside kick here, right? Yeah. Kick is good. It is drilled by Curtis Falkenberg. TSU pulling to within 10 points. That is their first scoring drive of the second half. And again, I mean, it just, the Tigers really haven't given their fans a whole lot to cheer for this second half, despite an amazing first half. But again, like we said during halftime, you have to play two halves. <laughs> At the end of the day, and it's amazing how teams look totally different from one half to another, and that's exactly what you saw here in this second half. 
The scoring drive for Texas Southern University. Ten plays, 84 yards, two minutes and 40 seconds before Jace Wilson found his man in the end zone, Kirian Charlo, the 5'9", 175-pounder from Missouri City, Texas. Played his high school ball at Ridge Point, right outside of Houston. Yeah, we're in the certainly sprawling metropolis of Houston, which from from uh, greater Houston area from side to side is about an hour and a half from one side to the other. Well, <laughs> North, you, south, east, you, west, right? You, you're counting on good traffic if you want to do it an hour and a half. So True. Patrick Helen will try the onside kicks. He gets the bounce he wants, and the ball is loose. Tigers had a shot at it, and they got it. So Texas Southern University comes up with the recovery on the onside kick by Patrick Helen. He let that. when they Once they let it hit, it took that weird bounce. Yep, and that's what you're trying to do right there. Look, it bounced, it bounced two or three different times, and that's what you're looking for. Now, this discussion may be about that they touch it too early. But he no, touched he it. No, he touched it, but obviously it was a Florida A&M guy who touched it first. Right, and as long as he touches it, it's live ball right after that. I didn't see a Tiger. The onside kick was recovered by the kicking team. It will be first down, Texas Southern. So Texas Southern has the football. And an opportunity with one minute and 13 seconds to go. So how about that? Tigers putting on a late press late in this game. Well, it happens once. You see what happens now. Let's see. Yeah, that was a perfectly executed onside kick. He got the bounce he wanted. It hit off the other team's player, a kick coverage guy, and then you make the recovery. So here comes Jace Wilson again after getting the onside kick. Owens in motion. Comes back the other way with a screen to Quay Davis, and Davis still on his feet. Davis is going to turn it into a gain of about nine. As the Tigers get back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Clock is ticking. That's a first down. So Quay Davis picked up the first down. So here comes Wilson. Ball slips out of his hand. We've seen some strange things here tonight. Jace Wilson with a pump fake, and the ball slipped out of his hand. Fortunately for them, the Tigers got it back. Yeah, watch that. Again, no, no play action there. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, it slipped out on his trying to trying to bring the ball back. It slipped out. And he doesn't know where it is. Yeah. Look at it. He's, he made a complete circle. He has no idea where it is, but the Tigers, fortunately for them, they got back on the football, and Wilson is going to have another shot at it. Well, they got 40 seconds. You, you talk about needing some magic. Let's They're going to need some amazing magic let's here. Let's take a look at our standings brought to you by GM tonight. You can see Alcorn State tied with Southern and Prairie View in the West, all at 3-1. and one. Right now, this game's still going on. It's a Florida a and with a 4-0 record, trying to go to 5-0 and tonight. Texas Southern down there at 1-2 and two in the West. And uh, the West is going to be the Wild Wild West, but it looks like Florida A&M all the way in the East. Oh, yeah, no question. But, again, I think, you know, unless truly a miracle happens here, I think Texas Southern is not going to be out of that talk in the Wild West. So Wilson steps up in the pocket, and it's intercepted. His pass is intercepted by Lovey Jenkins. And he was trying to hit his receiver on the crossing route. May have led him a little too much. And that's going to seal the deal with 34 seconds left in this game. So way to cap off. A sensational second half by the Rattlers, and they do it with a turnover late in the ball game. Yeah, and again, trying to force something to happen. Overthrew it a little bit, just uh, couldn't. Good job, intercepted, take the knee. Don't let anything stranger happen <laughs> uh, for the Rattlers there. Uh, take your knee, now they'll knee on the ball and uh, call this one a night. And again, uh, as we talked about, it would have taken a real miracle. So now uh, the Rattlers will be perfect in conference. Uh, and and uh, TSU's two-game uh, winning streak is now over. But I'll tell you, they're going to really see a lot of good things in that first half, and they got to figure out a way to repeat it. Came out, and the Tigers had a great offensive plan, and it worked. I mean, they were up 14 nothing and rolling, and they pretty much had the Rattlers confused. But that confusion went away in the last two minutes of the first half. 
Let me get your final thoughts on this. What? Where you? How do you wrap? Put a bow on this thing for me. Well, two things, right? So, from a TSU perspective, I think they are able to look at film and say, "Look, when we bring the intensity to the game, we can play with anyone because FAMU is the best team in conference right now. No one can dispute it." And we played them, and we were actually outgunning them till that one big play before the half. Second half, we came out with less intensity. They brought it to us, and we didn't we didn't hit back. And I think those are the things they're going to look at. But from a coaching standpoint, I, their game plan was fantastic. They just didn't execute in the second half. And from FAMU's side, the Rattlers are going to look at it. Just like Simmons says, you have got to be ready from the start of the game. You can get by with it a few times, but you can't keep doing that. You have to come out swinging, and you have to be consistent. The Rattlers finish the game with 436 total yards, most of that in the second half. So for Jorge Vargas and our entire crew, I'm Butch Alcindor saying so long from Houston.